Hello, I'm James Rohde, Artistic Director of the Des Moines Choral Society. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Des Moines Choral Society's 2020 Singathon. Over the next 10 hours or so, we'll be showcasing choir members' musical talents with pre recorded performances made at home or church, either solo or together with family. These will be interspersed with live Zoom call ins by the performers and choral society hosts, as well as some special guests. Each time slot is 15 minutes, so you can tune in on the quarter hour to hear a new performance. You can click the link below to view the Singathon live stream schedule, as well as learn more about the performers and make a donation. Many of you are tuning in because you've been so kind as to make an online donation to the Choral Society as a singer sponsor. To all of you, our heartfelt thanks. Your generosity has already gone a long way towards making our fundraising goals. If there are those who haven't already done so, you might consider making a donation to help keep the Choral Society alive until we can sing together again. Maybe you'll be inspired after hearing some of the music on this live stream. And if so, the link I mentioned will take you to our Singathon page where you can search for that singer and make a donation. Our choir would ordinarily be presenting our annual Christmas with the Choral Society concert right about at this time, as has been our custom almost since the group was founded back in 1979. We might get into a bit of the choir's history later in this live stream, but let me tell you a little bit about the Choral Society of today, starting with myself. I'm director of choral activities at Iowa State University in Ames, so my days are normally full of coaching and nurturing young voices, assisting in their growth as performers and conductors of choral music. But one of my loves has always been the opportunity to direct in addition, Adult Choir, which offers a different set of challenges and rewards in terms of maturity of sound and musical sophistication. So for the past 18 years, I've been driving to Des Moines on Sunday evenings to rehearse with members of the Des Moines Choral Society, and what a pleasure it has been. The Choral Society membership is a diverse mix of young and older singers, some of whom have been with the choir for over 30 years. A number of the singers are music teachers themselves, but most others are in various professions or jobs. All of them are passionate about the possibilities of uniting their voices in choral sound. You will hear more of this directly from the singers as they describe what the Choral Society means to them. As artistic director, I get to not only rehearse and direct the choir, but also choose the program material that suits the choir's abilities and hopefully makes for an engaging performance for our audiences. I draw from repertoire covering almost 500 years of choral composition, from the Renaissance and Baroque air masters, such as Palestrina and Bach, to modern composers like Eric Whitaker or Jake Renestead. 
For the past few years, I've also had the privilege of incorporating brand new choral works that are composed by Elaine Hagenberg, a choral society singer who also happens to be a choral composer of considerable renown and whose music is now being sung throughout the world. Elaine has been our composer in residence since 2017. And during today's live stream, you'll get a chance to hear some of her compositions in recorded performances. One other aspect of the choir I want to highlight is that of the rehearsal accompanist. I've been privileged to work for many years with Elaine Wedeking, whose talents on piano have added immensely to the professionalism of the choir's achievements. Since Elaine retired from her accompanist role at the end of last season, I've had the joy of working with Michael Gukin, a highly skilled pianist who also sings in the choir. I should mention that Michael has also offered his accompanying talents to back some of the individual performances you'll hear today. And Michael has been an integral part of another Choral Society project that's recently come to fruition, the Messiah Project, a video exploration of Handel's great choral work and how it's experienced by singers. More information about that project can be found at our website, dmchoral.org. Finally, I want to say a few words about the importance of the arts in a time of pandemic. With many of us focused on how to survive financially and keep our families healthy and sane, how is there room for the arts? Robert Shaw said, in a world of political, economic, and personal disintegration, music is not a luxury, but a necessity. Not simply because it is therapeutic, but because it is the persistent focus of one's intelligence, aspirations, and goodwill. The Des Moines Choral Society has been living out that philosophy during the past 41 years for Central Iowa audiences. And we are longing to return to a time when we can pick up that thread again. We hope today's live stream gives you a sense of the musical passion that makes the whole more than the sum of its parts. So now I want to invite you to watch and listen as we present the diverse musical talents of Choral Society members as a way to keep the spirit of the music alive in our hearts and in the hearts of you, our audience. Thanks so much to all of our tuned in to this special live stream.
Hello, welcome to the uh, society, uh, the Des Moines Choral Society's uh, 2020 Singathon. Uh, my name is Lee Henderson, and I'm your host for this hour. And I'm here today with our first singer of the day, Aaron Chittenden, and his son Dante. Aaron, uh, please introduce yourself and let everyone know what you're going to be performing today. Well, thanks, Lee. Hi, I'm Aaron Chittenden. I have been a member of the Choral Society for 14 years now. Uh, today, I'm going to be performing a couple of pieces. Uh, one is the Christmas song, otherwise known as Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, and Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. And I have my son Dante here with me because he is also performing a piano composition, an original piece that he titles Rio de Janeiro. Um, we hope you really, uh, really enjoy the performances. Uh, we had a lot of fun uh, setting them up and, and pulling them together for this event. Um that's great, Aaron. And um, uh, for the people who are who are watching at home, is there anyone um, that you're uh, hoping is able to see you and your son perform today? Well, I believe that uh, my mom is on this morning. She mentioned she was looking forward to the performances, and I'm hoping that Dante's uh, piano teacher is is on as well. Well, that's excellent. Um, we're so glad that the two of you could join us um, for your performance today. Um, we're about out of time, so. Uh, I just want to thank you both and thank everyone at home who is watching today for the um, first singathon that we have. And thank you to everyone who has sponsored so far. And to remind everyone, if they're enjoying what they're seeing, they're free to uh, sponsor yet. There should be a link on the YouTube page. Thank you very much. Hi. My name's Aaron Chittenden, and I sing baritone in the Des Moines Choral Society. If these were normal times, I would be preparing for my 14th Christmas with the Choral Society performance. But since they're not normal times, I'll be performing here in my living room. Um, as a baritone, it was kind of hard to think of uh, what I would perform for you all, because when you're a baritone, you learn to love singing a lot of whole notes and half notes and notes that are just filler for the rest of the choir. So since I am in my living room, I'm going to do what Jim always admonishes us not to do, which is sing as though we're in our living room. We'll start with an a cappella, a Christmas song. Then we're going to go to the piano room and have my son Dante play a original composition on piano for you. And he told me he just wants to start playing, so I'll tell you about him. He is a 10th grader in Dallas Center Grimes schools, plays tenor sax in the jazz band. Um, spent several months, long time, sort of self-teaching piano, and then finally started lessons this last spring. So I hope you'll enjoy that. And then we'll come back here where I will do a karaoke version of Have Yourself a Merry Christmas. And as with most people singing karaoke, I don't actually know that song very well, so I will be holding a phone giving me the words to say them at approximately the correct time. I hope you enjoy. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose, Yuletide carols being sung by a choir, and folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe help to make the season bright tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight they know that santa's on his way He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child is gonna spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids from 1 to 92 Although it's been said Many times, many ways Merry Christmas to you They know that 
Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child he's gonna spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids from one to ninety-two. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas for you.
Hello and welcome back. My name is Lee Henderson and I am your host for this hour. Um, I'm here today with uh, Lingyu Xiao 
uh, who sings in the Choral Society. And I'd like to welcome her to this event. And uh, Ling Yu, would you please introduce yourself and let everyone know what it is you're gonna be performing? Hi, I'm Ling. Um, I have been a choir member since 2016. And today I would like to share my musical journey with you with a little story, uh, stories and performances. Um, well, that's great. And um, how many years have you been in the Choral Society? Um, it will be four years now. And I moved to Iowa in 2016. And that's when I started to becoming a member of the group. Oh, that's great. Um, is there anyone who um, you hope is out there watching today? Um, yes, I shared this event with my friends in New York. So I hope they got the time zone right and is watching right now. Um, friends and family from North Carolina and friends and families in New York and probably, probably not in Taiwan. They're probably sleeping right now. Yep. Uh, that's awesome. Um, we love to hear that there's so many people who might be watching throughout the country and throughout the world. Um, you know, it, actually a good opportunity for me just to let everyone know that they can um, watch this uh, now and then we'll be posting it again later so that this is something that they can watch uh, when they wake up on the other side of the world. Oh, um, no. Yeah, that's great. And um, uh, let everyone know as well that um, while they've sponsored us now, uh, there's still another opportunity to sponsor uh, by clicking the link at the YouTube page. And uh, Ling, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I was born in Taiwan. I started piano lesson when I was six. My favorite things about piano lessons were getting stickers from my teacher and playing piano duets. When I was in fourth grade, still living in Taiwan, 
My mom told me I shall learn another instrument and I get to pick the instrument. I remember seeing this big poster in my music classroom. It was a handsome man holding this gorgeous instrument and the instrument was called flute. I didn't know anything about the flute, but because of the poster, it started my life journey with the flute. family moved to Queens, New York when I was in sixth grade. I didn't speak English. Music became my voice while I was learning English, and music eventually became my livelihood. And now, as a music therapist in Des Moines, I have learned so much from my patients, their family members, and my co-workers. They expand my musical knowledge and fill my life with love and joy. Now I would like to share an audio recording with you. I set to music this well-known poem in the Alzheimer's community. I did this to validate a caregiver's feeling when he shared with me how this poem provided him support and comfort. Do not ask me to remember or try to make me understand. Let me rest and know you're with me Kiss my cheek and hold my hand I'm confused beyond your concept I am sad and sick and lost All I know is that I need you All I know is that I want you To be with me Lose your patient with me. Do not scold or curse or cry. I can't help the way I'm acting. I can't be different though I try. Just remember that I need you, that the best of me is gone. Please don't fail to stay.
thank you for your support and spending this time with me. I would like to end with the song I Love by Tom T. Hall. A former hospice chaplain shared this song with me. Then I realized most of my patients know it and love it, and I got to love it too. I look forward to seeing you in person soon. I love singing in the Des Moines Choral Society because it's my self-care time. I get to be still and engage in something beautiful and meaningful. And we're so blessed to have Dr. Rohde as our director and Michael as our pianist. Hello and welcome back. My name is Lee Henderson and I am the host for uh, this hour. And today I'm, or now I'm here with Aaron Coleman, who is the president of our choir. And I'd like to introduce him. Aaron, would you please say hello to everybody and uh, describe what you're talking or what you're going to be singing today? Hi, good morning. I've got a few numbers for you guys this morning. I'm actually starting out with an old standby from the king himself, Elvis Presley. I'm going to sing Blue Christmas for you. Followed by every, one of everyone's favorites, Oh Holy Night. And then oddly enough, I'm going back to some of the old standards with a Bing Crosby number of White Christmas. And then I'm actually going to end out here uh, this morning singing Silent Night. 
That sounds great, Aaron. Um, would you mind telling everyone um, how long you've been with the choir? Surely. I've been with the group about uh, five or six years now. It's hard to remember. I just know I was told by my wife I needed to get out of the house and start singing or I was going to drive everybody crazy. So lo and behold, here I am. And I'm actually now in the middle of my third season as president of the board. That's great. And you and I work closely a lot of times, Aaron. Um, who uh, at home do you hope is, is watching you perform here today? You know, honestly, I don't know um, who's watching or listening right now. You know, I know I've spread this far and wide to family and friends. I think the whole goal is just to try, my goal at least today is to try and bring a little bit of holiday cheer to as many people as possible, given the unique situation that we have right now. That's great, Aaron. Well, we thank you so much for your performance. You and I will be having a conversation later. I'd like to uh, thank the people who have donated already to us and remind uh, anyone that if they haven't donated, there's still an opportunity uh, to click the link at the bottom of the YouTube page. Thank you so much. Oh, 
chain shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus praise we let all within us praise his holy name.
And welcome back. Uh, this is Lee Henderson, uh, your host for the Coral Society. Um, and we're here today um, to have a, our first uh, live conversation with uh, a member of the choir and actually our president, Aaron Coleman. Uh, Aaron, welcome. Thanks, Lee. It's nice to be back on here with you again. Yeah, we just heard Aaron uh, perform uh, several songs and we're so glad he can be with us here uh, again today. Um, so as the president, we thought we would have a, a conversation here just to talk to Aaron a little bit, maybe a little bit more about his own history with music and, and um, then talk a little bit about the Choral Society and what a typical year looks like for us when we're not in the middle of a pandemic and having to cancel some of our events. Um, so as we start that conversation, Aaron, maybe you could just talk a little bit about your own musical experience and education. Well, growing up, um, I come from a very musical family. Uh, one of the earliest memories I remember is my family would sing the table prayer, the doxology table prayer before family gatherings. And what I remember about it that's probably unique is that it was sung in four-part harmony, which is not always, which I learned um, is not usual to most families. So growing up, I was in a family of musicians. And so music became a very important part of my life all the way through school. And even in college, one of the one of my criteria in college was looking at schools that had a strong music program and which that led me to my alma mater Wartburg College where I spent uh, four years singing with the Wartburg Choir with the opportunities that it presented to tour the, um, Europe twice actually um, both as a sophomore and then again my junior year for a total of about six or seven weeks in, in Europe and predominantly Germany. Um, following that time um, I actually ended up out in the Washington DC area working for a few years and I performed with the Congressional Chorus out there, which gave us quite a few opportunities, um, performed in the Kennedy Center a couple of times, uh, as well as various churches and other larger venues in the area. So it was a great experience. It's always interesting to see the backstage of some of those big venues like that, to kind of see what goes on behind the curtains. And then uh, now I'm back here. I moved back to Iowa and my wife told me I needed to get out of the house and uh, best way to do it is to start singing. Well, we're all grateful for that uh, encouragement she gave you. Um, I also sang in college and I uh, was able to sing at Carnegie Hall as well. And so I have a, I have a similar experience in being able to tour some really fun and interesting places, um, you know, as, as a singer. So Aaron, how long have you been involved with the Choral Society? Did you say? I've been involved for about five or six years now. Um, I actually joined mid-season one year, and then, um, and that was again when my wife told me to get out of the house. And so, you know, having started and joining mid-season, it was a little different, um, not starting at the beginning of the year. So it was a little awkward getting to know people because everybody, when you start singing with the group, everyone introduces themselves on the first day. Well, when you start mid-season, you introduce yourself when you start, but the rest of the group, we don't spend half an hour going through introductions for the other 60 to 70 members of the choir. So it was a little uh, different getting used to knowing, getting to know people, but you find out you learn to know people very quickly in your section that sit around you, you get to know them fairly well. And from there, it was just for one of the things has just always been volunteer work and being involved in things is something that I also grew up in. Um, just the way my family was, is we were always involved in activities. And so this was just something that I just started getting more and more involved in it. So, you know, after I'd sung for a couple of seasons, I joined the board um, and actually sang as, or perf not sang, but I actually, my, the first role I served on the board was actually as our vice president member of concert services. Uh, where I held that position for a few years, and that was more or less logistics manager for the group. You're the guy that's in charge of making sure risers get set up at our concerts, not only get set up and torn down, but then you're also the one who gets to help organize getting them from point A to point B and back again. Yeah. So it's always interesting. Fun, uh, fun laborious work, but work that has to be done. You know, putting on yep. a performance is... Uh, anything but easy, you know, and it's obviously something that takes a lot of, uh, a lot of manpower, a lot of organization, and that's all separate and apart from the rehearsals and all the, you know, the work you have to do as a musician. Um, Aaron, can you maybe just describe for our listeners and people watching here, what is a, what's a typical year in the Choral Society look like, just in terms of the schedule and uh, performances people 
could maybe normally expect from the Coral Society? A typical year for us, uh, we'd be starting up probably in early to mid-August. Um, every year, every member re-auditions. So each year we have a whole set, whole slate of auditions and people are going to make sure that um, we go through things and Dr. Rohde has an opportunity to listen to everybody. So we know exactly where people are from a voice standpoint. It helps him put his group together and help organize where the voices go because I know there is some sort of art and science behind how he puts people where they are in the group, but I don't understand it and probably never will. So that's, you know, that process starts in August. Um, usually at the very tail end of August, we're beginning our um, process of working with uh, starting our rehearsals. So the first couple of rehearsals, you know, the first rehearsal really is just part of us just getting to, you know, welcome back, seeing people, you know, seeing old friends again that we haven't seen for a few months, um, making new friends that we're going to be singing with for, for, you know, for the season. And so that's really our first rehearsal. And then it's down to work. And, and it seems Aaron, strange to start Aaron, Christmas music in August. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, how many members are normally in the choir on average? Uh, we vary a little bit. Um, our membership can vary um, sometimes any from as low as probably in the mid 50s. So maybe 55, 60 members where um, there have been a couple of years where we've actually been up within one or two seats of capacity in our rehearsal hall, which puts us, you know, close to 75 members. So yeah. it, it does vary a little bit from one year to the next. And what's the, what's the draw? I know, um, you know, as a board member, um, and I'm not a performer in the choir, although I've, you know, sang in other choirs, but um, I think we have members who travel some distance just to be, you know, a member of this choir. So are most of them in the Des Moines area? And then do we have others outside? A lot of our members do come from the Des Moines area, so the Des Moines metro area, and that's probably within about 20 to 30 mile radius around the city. Um, we've got several members from Indianola, uh, the Winterset area, but we've also had members drive down here from as far as Fort Dodge, which is, you know, that's about a 90 minute drive one way. And, you know, talking with this particular individual, it's the reputation that the Des Moines Choral Society has for musicality and beautiful tone and proper vowels, which Dr. Rody will be happy to hear I mentioned vowels. <laughs> um, you know, I think that's what a lot of people, what we find they performed through high school and they performed in college with, you know, whether it's Iowa State or Wartburg, Luther, you know, Simpson, any of the, wherever they performed in college. And then you get out for a couple of years and you find you miss it. And so you start looking to fill that hole. And one of the things that we found is people with the Des Moines Choral Society, that's one way that they're filling that, that gap. And it's just something that people like to do. It helps them. For me, it's, a, it's almost like it's a meditative state. When we get up there and perform, at some points, I can tell you there are concerts in college. I don't remember. I know I was up there. I remember walking in, walking out, but you become so focused and it's something that you concentrate on that you just, everything else just kind of stops. Yeah. And, and I just, can, I, I know that feeling, Aaron, and, um, you know, even, even the rehearsal, uh, can be such a, a great, um, a great experience in your week, you know, and we all have very hectic lives. And so I, I know when I've sang in choirs in the past that I've really just enjoyed, uh, focusing on music and, and creativity. It's a part of the brain that you need to exercise. Um, and let me move on here just a little bit. We have about five more minutes left before we have to uh, move on to our next uh, singer here. But Aaron, I'd like to ask, uh, maybe you can just describe, we have typically two concerts every year. Would you mind just letting everyone know what our typical performance schedule looks like? Yeah, typically our performance schedule, oddly enough, um, most times, and a lot of years, it's actually this first Saturday um, sometimes the second Saturday of December, depending on how things fit within the calendar. A lot of years, actually, I am preparing right now to handle logistics. I've been working with, um, there have been days, I've, a lot of times on this, about this time of day, actually, I've been driving a U-Haul down Grand Avenue in Des Moines, hauling risers from one point to another, because there are a lot of times our concert is usually that first or second Saturday of December. And so, 
And that's one I think that with this unusual time we've really missed. I know that's something that I've kind of missed as well. And then we also typically have another concert, usually towards the mid to late part of April or first part of May. And that's that'll be our Masterworks concert. The December concerts always has historically been Christmas with the Choral Society, where we'll be performing more season appropriate music, where when we move into our spring concert, we're really focused on pieces um, that are more con considered to be more masterworks. Um, some Bach is, is a big one that we do a lot. And along with other pieces, um, one of the things we've done a lot lately in the past few years is really been enjoyable is one of our members is also our composer in residence, Elaine Hagenberg. Mm. And we've had compositions from her every year featured at a lot of times at our Christmas concert. And it's uh, great to have not only have that talent locally in the Des Moines area, but it's even more impressive to sing that piece with the composer. You know, it's great to have the composer there. It's another thing to be standing on the risers with that composer performing her music. Yeah, um, and I've, I've heard her music several times. It's, it's just wonderful. Um, I'd like to maybe just let everybody know, too, that, you know, uh, many of the performances uh, since I've been on the board of the Choral Society have been down at the St. Ambrose Cathedral in downtown Des Moines. And for those who've ex had that experience, it's a, it's a wonderful and beautiful place to perform. And, and the Choral Society is very lucky to have that. So if anyone has not seen us perform uh, live before, you know, when we get back to a normal year, uh, hopefully you know, 2020, 20, uh, excuse me, 2021 is that year. Uh, it's, it's just a outstanding place to, to uh, experience uh, the Choral Society's music. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. The hall is beautiful. It's just a, visually, it's beautiful, but also acoustically, St. Ambrose Cathedral is one of the, it's as, I think it's as close to acoustically perfect for our choral setting as we can really get in this area. And so it's, it's just been a great venue for us over the years where we've, we sound good in it. We look good in it. It's just a great venue overall. And, you know, we can't, we certainly can't thank uh, the diocese here in Des Moines enough for having that, not only having that facility, but being willing to share that with groups like ourselves. Well, um, yeah, couldn't agree more with that, Aaron. I've performed there, and it's it's just a breathtaking experience. Um, we're about out of time, and so I want to thank you, Aaron, for joining us. And I would also like just to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's watching and everyone who has sponsored us already. And remind uh, anyone who has not had a chance to sponsor yet to please um, look on the YouTube page. There's a link down there at the bottom. So feel free to sponsor if you if you so choose. And Aaron, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Lee. Are we good, John? We are at 80%.
welcome back. Um, I'm here today. Um, thank you for watching again uh, for the Choral Society's uh, Singathon. Uh, I'm here now uh, with Beth Dutmeyer. And um, Beth, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we've got a few minutes here before you start singing. So uh, would you mind please just introducing yourself to everyone and then talk a little bit about what it is you're going to be singing? Sure. Um, hi, I'm Beth Deutmeyer. I live in Waukee and I've spent five seasons with the Choral Society in the soprano section. Um, and now I work as a voice teacher. Um, and so what I'm singing today, <laughs> I, I decided to sing um, He Shall Feed His Flock Come Unto Him from, um, the, from the Messiah, which a lot of times when you see the Messiah is done by a mezzo soprano and then a soprano, but there is a version that's just all soprano for both verses. And so that's the version I'm doing because that's where I belong up at, up there, not down there. Um, and then I'm gonna do a couple of Christmas classics. Um, I'm gonna sing White Christmas and then a slightly, you know, COVID related spin on I'll be home for Christmas. Yeah, so well, we that's, home. that sounds wonderful. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, who at home do you hope is watching? Um, I would imagine my husband and kids and I think my parents are also watching and my in-laws maybe, so lots of family. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope everyone's able to enjoy your performance. Me too. Thanks.
Okay, and welcome back. Again, my name is Lee Henderson, and I am the host for um, the Choral Society Singathon this morning. And I'm here now with McKenna Shinners. Um, McKenna, would you mind introducing yourself and letting everyone at home know what it is you're going to be singing? Yeah. Hi. I'm McKenna Shinners, as Lee said, and thank you to the organizing team for putting this all together, and thanks to all of you for watching today. I am um, a member of the Choral Society in the soprano section, and I am fairly new to Des Moines. I've only been in town for maybe like five years, and uh, one of the things that I looked forward to the most um, was figuring out my schedule so that I could be a part of the Choral Society after I got here, because I missed singing so much um, from my college days. And I'll be offering a couple of short little um, things. I'm a very, very amateur guitarist and uh, prepared um, Mary Chip and Cap Carpenters, Come Darkness, Come Light, which is one of my favorite Advent um, kind of songs, Christmas songs. And another favorite um, seasonal kind of song is Let It Fall by the wonderful band Over the Rhine, which um, has this amazing jazzy piano accompaniment, which you will not hear on this one because it sang it acapella. Um, but I encourage you to go check it out if you like it. And I'm also the owner educator of Leaps and Sound School of Music. So I prepared a video with a free um, indoor snowball activity uh, that is great for families and young ones, zero to seven. Oh, that's so. wonderful. Uh, McKenna, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate everything that you've done and we look forward yeah. to hearing your performance. Yeah, thank you. My name is McKenna, and I am the owner and educator of Leaps and Sounds School of Music. I live in Altoona, but I teach online all right now um, because of the pandemic, and it has been such a wonderful adventure to meet students from all over the country that I never would have met otherwise. And I wanted to offer um, a fun snow day activity where you can make your own snow day. It doesn't have to be snowing outside and you can have some winter fun inside. You only need a couple of supplies. 
One is your smartphone and the Kinder Music app, which is free in um, any of the download stores that you use for your phone. And Kinder Music is spelled with a K at the beginning and at the end so that you can find that. Um, and you need a bowl full of cotton balls and you're pretty much ready to go. If you have a chance, you can also check out this amazing book from the library. It's called 10 Ways to Hear the Snow and it will totally activate your kiddos listening ears. In it, a lovely family story occurs in which um, Lena is the main character. The little girl goes um, on a walk to see her grandmother, Siti, um, who lives in uh, an assisted living facility. Um, she worries about her because she's afraid she didn't know that it snowed because Siti can't see very well. And on the way, Lena discovers that there are nine different ways to hear the snow, whether it's scritching and scratching of um, people wiping off their cars with their, um, with their window scra uh, scrapers, or shoveling their lawns, or um, shoveling their lawns, their drives. Um, the, the plump of a little blue jay flopping down into um, a uh, snow-covered limb. Um, all kinds of different sounds. And she gets to her grandmother's house. They make a traditional Lebanese treat together because they're a Lebanese family. And then her grandmother, Siti, shows her that the 10th way to listen for the sound of snow is to open the window and listen for the quiet because quiet is the tenth way to tell that it's snowed outside. So if you get a chance to check out 10 Ways to Hear the Snow, written by Kathy Camper and illustrated by Kennard, pa Kennard Pack, um, it is a wonderful, wonderful story about listening, and you get some great cultural exposure um, and empathy for uh, folks who live in assisted living homes and um, going on lots of fun adventures outside. So if you have a chance, read this book first, download the Kinder Music app, and then invite your kiddos to hear, um, to listen for what the snow might sound like. And then you can either sing the song or you can find a recording of it in the Kinder Music app under the weather playlist under themes. It's called Snowflakes. And you'll invite them to listen for the quiet with their listening ears and encouraging some self-regulation practice. You can see how long they can sit still and wonder. You can pay attention to if they're um, content to sort of wonder and look at the snow as it falls, or if they're just too excited to get their hands on it and start to play. Either one is okay. Um, but the song goes like this. Snowflakes are falling, falling very softly. Snowflakes are falling, falling very softly. Down, 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 snowflakes are falling on the ground. Snowflakes. Just like that. You can walk around the room and gently let the snow fall down on top of them. And then after you're done with that and they're so done being quiet and listening, it's time to turn on a song called the Jingle Bell Symphony, which you can search for using the search function in the Kinder Music app. And this song features two kinds of sections, a loud section and a soft section. And during the loud section, I would invite you to have a snowball fight and pack up some cotton balls in your hands and throw them um, around the room, make a mess, have fun. They're just cotton balls, so they'll clean up really easily. And um, on, during the quiet parts, you can try tiptoeing 
and just dropping dropping the snow. That's maybe for more advanced um, self-regulators with good listening ears. For younger kiddos, just throwing the snowballs around is gonna be so much fun. And if you have an infant or um, a baby who's not moving around yet, this is an awesome, awesome tummy time activity to be dropping the, um, the cotton balls within their field of vision and watching them look at them and maybe even reach out for them, practicing some dexterity and movement. Um, this is age appropriate in lots of different ways for a lot of different kids. And finally, at the end of the, um, your snowball play, um, feel free to replay the song. It's kind of short, so you can do it a few times. At the end of that, when you're ready for to move on to something else, you can invite everybody to pretend to be snow plows and shovel up all of their um, all of their uh, different cotton balls and help be good community helpers, shoveling up all the snow and putting it back into your bag or bowl or whatever. And not to be wasted, these probably aren't gonna be any good for actual hygienic use, but you can totally make another snowman craft or snow craft out of it, maybe even clouds um, to use with your kiddos. So um, always able to use and reuse our materials. And so I hope that is a helpful um, little lesson for you that includes um, the musical principles of loud and soft or forte and piano. Um, that includes a little bit of multicultural exposure into this Lebanese family and their neighborhood and their practices that invites some imaginary play um, using snowballs inside and um, listening for ways to hear the snow. I hope that's a helpful little lesson for you. And again, um, my name's McKenna at Leaps and Sounds School of Music online. And I'm gonna post this little lesson preview on my website, so you don't need to take notes. Just head over there to leapsandsoundsmusic.com and I will have this up for you with links and everything. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday and thanks for supporting the Des Moines Choral Society. It's near and dear to my heart and I'm so grateful because I can know that it's near and dear to yours as well. Happy holidays. Have you been trying too hard? Have you been holding too tight? Have you been worrying too much lately all night? Whatever we've lost, I think we're gonna let it go. Let it fall like snow. Cause rain and leaves and snow and tears and stars and that's not all my friend. They all fall with confidence and grace. So let it fall. Let it fall. Have you been caring too much? How this one ends? You know it's not the kind of fight that you lose or win. When you're down so low, you feel the imprint of the ground on skin. Look around, breathe in. Cause rain and leaves and snow and tears and stars, and that's not all my friend. They all fall with confidence and grace. So let it fall. Let it fall Cause rain and leaves and snow and tears and stars And that's not all my friend They all fall with confidence and grace 
So let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it Hello, uh, welcome back to the Des Moines Choral Society Singathon. Uh, my name is Lee Henderson and I'm your host right now. Uh, we've got with us now uh, John Duvick, who is both a board member, um, the treasurer of the Choral Society, and also the master producer behind this entire event. So John, would you mind introducing yourself and letting everyone at home knowing what it is you're performing? Yeah, hi everybody. Can you hear me? I'm getting a little echo in my headphones, but I think I can make this work. Yeah, I'm John Duvick. I'm a board member and a uh, past singer with the Choral Society for about 30 seasons, <clears throat> and I enjoy in being an audience member now. Uh, yeah, a little bit about what I'm singing. I've got a couple of pieces on uh, various stringed instruments. I'm going to start with a, an old hymn, Good King Wenceslas, which is a little odd because it was not written until the 1800s, the words, and the song is a, a Renaissance song that's actually about spring, so that's a little bit unusual. And then I'm doing a John McCutcheon number, which is uh, called Christmas in the Trenches. And I'll let that speak for itself. And then Carol's going to join me on a version of an Amy Grant song that we recorded many years ago for, a, for some of our nieces and nephews. It's called Tender Iowa Christmas. Uh, thank you, John. That sounds wonderful. Um... Is I'm there just anyone you can track of the time here? <laughs> that, yeah, that's why John I'm has, sort of glancing away. John has many responsibilities today, and, and frankly, we could not be doing this without John. So, from everyone in the Choral Society and everyone on the board and, and the group that's organizing this, John, thank you so much for everything you've done. Um, I would like to say thank you to everyone for letting me host today and for letting um, the Choral Society present this music to you. We're very grateful for the opportunity. Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen, though 
the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. Hither, page, and stand by me, if thou knowest it telling. Yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what is dwelling? Sire, he lives a goodly fence underneath the mountain, up against the forest fence by St. Agnes Mountain. Bring me flesh and bring me wine, bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I shall see him dine when we bear them thither. Page and monarch, forth they went, forth they went together. Through the rude winds wild lament and the bitter Sir, the night is darker now, and the wind grows stronger. Fails my heart, I know not how, I can go no longer. Mark my footsteps, my good page, tread thou in them boldly. Thou wilt find the winter's rage, freeze thy blood less coldly. In his master's steps he trod, where the it was in the very sod where the saint had printed. Therefore, Christian men, be sure, wealth or rank possessing, ye who now will bless the poor, shall yourselves find blessing. My name is Alfred Tolliver. I come from Liverpool. One afternoon, the war was waiting for me after school. To Belgium and to Flanders and to Germany to hear. I fought for king and country. I love. I was lying with my messmates on the cold and rocky ground. But across the lines of battle came a most peculiar sound. Says I now, listen up, me boys, each soldier strange to hear, as one lone German voice rang out so clear. By one, each German voice joined in the harmony. The cannon they stood silent, the gas clouds rolled no more, as Christmas brought a respite to the war. As soon as they were finished and a reverent pause was spent, God rest ye merry gentlemen, struck up some. They sang was still a knock to silent night, says I. And in two tongues one song filled up the sky. There's someone coming towards us, a blind sentry cry. 
All sights were fixed on one lone figure trudging from their side. His crucified like a Christmas snow shone on that plain so bright as he bravely strode on our One by one from either side came into no man's land. With neither gun nor bayonet, we met them hand to hand. We shared some secret branding and we wished each other well. And in a flare lit soccer game, we gave them hell. We traded chocolates. Sons and fathers far from families of their own. And Sanders played his squeeze box, and they had a violin. That curious and unlikely band of men. Soon daylight stole upon us. France was France once more. With sad farewells, we each began. Settle back to war. The question burned in every heart that lived that magic night. Whose family have I fixed within my sights? Christmas in the trenches where the frosts and bitter hung. The frozen fields of France were warm, where songs of peace were sung.
Merry Christmas, everybody. Good morning and welcome back everyone. My name is Aaron Coleman. I'm president of the board and I am your host for the next uh, couple hours here with our singathon today on the Des Moines Choral Society. Joining me this morning is our next singer, Jane Ryder. And Jane, welcome to the Zoom, our Zoom meeting here in our live stream. And tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're singing today. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I am Jane Ryder, and I have sung with the Choral Society for 23 years. It's been one of the most um, important parts of my life. And I used to say before I retired that every Sunday night it was my therapy before I started doing therapy all week long. Um, I am going to be singing a song with my son, Benjamin, in Seattle, who studied with Dr. Rohde at Iowa State. And I'm also going to be... Uh, featured, featuring uh, my two grandsons, Nathan and Lucas, in a delightful, fun one. And then um, I'm finishing up with I Wonder As I Wander. One thing I wanted to make sure that I said to everyone was, thank you so much for your support. It is so meaningful and so appreciated. The Coral Society is, again, one of the most important things in my life. And the fact that you are supporting them really, really um, pleases me. I think that you're going to enjoy what's coming up. And um, I'm, I might want to tell you that in the piece with my grandsons, my husband is the Santa. So we'll keep that secret, Jane. That way nobody else knows that for the for the kids that are out there. But we appreciate all your time and look forward to listening to your performance here in just in a matter of a few seconds. Okay, well, thank you, Eric.
sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is like two?
Good morning again and welcome back. My name is Aaron Coleman. I'm your host of the Des Moines Choral Society Singathon. And joining me here is one of our singers and board members, Stephen Genheimer, and his daughter, Mira. Good morning, Stephen. Hi, Aaron. Hi, everyone. So, Stephen, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you'll be singing for us this morning. Well, I've been in the Des Moines area for about 10 years, and I've been a part of the Choral Society for about that length of time. And uh, today I'll be singing a wide range of things from the profound to the whimsical. Um, we've got Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, uh, Good King Wenceslas, We Three Kings, uh, and then a duet with my favorite song partner here, Daughter Mira, uh, Little Jingle Bells, which is a favorite in her world. Excellent. There's nothing wrong with the Little Jingle Bells this time of year. Although we're, we seem to be lacking a little bit of the snow side of it right now, but hey, there's still time for that, right, Mira? We can still get a little snow before Christmas, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, we appreciate you joining us this morning, Stephen, and we're glad to have you here. Uh, just one thing, just remind everyone, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching us on our YouTube stream, you can click the link below in the description to donate to the Des Moines Choral Society. Uh, also, just a reminder, next week, and you can find more information on this through our website, dmchoral.org, will be our Messiah Project premiering, and you should be able to view that on YouTube as well. So thank you again, and we appreciate everyone's time, and we're looking forward to Stephen and Mira here momentarily joining us online. Thank you, and we'll be back with you again soon. Forth they went, forth they went together Through the root 
winds wild lament and the bitter weather. Sigh, the night is darker now and the wind blows stronger. Fails my heart, I know now how I can go no longer. Mark my footsteps, good my page, tread thou in them boldly. Thou shalt find the winter's rage, freeze thy blood less coldly. In his master's steps he trod, where the snow lay dinted. Heat was in the very sod, which the saint had printed. Therefore, Christian folk, be sure, wealth or rank possessing, ye who now will bless the poor, shall yourselves find blessing. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, he'll go down in history. Sing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh O'er the fields we go Laughing all the way, ha ha ha. Bells and bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing a sleigh song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse up in sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse up in sleigh.
Good morning and welcome back. This is Aaron Coleman, our board president, and I'm hosting you for the time being with the Des Moines Choral Society Singathon. Joining me here is Wayne Gieselman, one of our members and a bass for us. And Wayne, can you tell us a little bit of information about yourself and what you'll be performing for us this morning? I would be happy to. Um, I am, I think, the oldest member of the Choral Society. I did not, I, I've been in the society for about five years now, but it was not till I retired that I actually um, made the effort to try to expand my horizons here. But I just have enjoyed the Choral Society so much and being able to go on Sunday nights, uh, as several people have said, that was my therapy. It helped me get, get ready for the rest of the week. Uh, what I, I'm a little different than everybody else in that I'm not really a, a, a trained musician but I have been involved in music all my life. I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do for this, uh, but as it happens about a month ago, uh, the man who probably had the most influence on my musical uh, skills and abilities passed away and I was asked to sing at his funeral. So what I'm going to perform for you here is not a performance. I'm gonna read the story, kind of my tribute to this man. And then at the end of that, there will be a, pretty bad recording, but of me and about a dozen other older men who got together and sang at this gentleman's funeral. Uh, we hadn't sung together for eight years, so you'll be able to tell it's not very polished, but we sang from our hearts and with gusto, and we're glad that we were able to do that. Well, you know, singing from your heart and with gusto is what matters, and so we thank you for your performance, and Wayne, you'll be, we'll have you here on screen performing momentarily. Happy holidays, everybody. My name's Wayne Gieselman. I sang at a funeral about two weeks ago. Now, you may wonder why a member of the Des Moines Choral Society is taking this moment to tell you about a singing engagement. After all, the Choral Society common denominator is a love of music and singing. So the fact that I sang at a funeral in the middle of a pandemic is probably not a completely surprising development. However, knowing that we are sharing our talents for this singathon and knowing the amazing talent that our group contains, I've decided to take a different approach for my talent. I'm going to share the story of the man who had the greatest influence on my musical life. I'm not a trained musician. I'm not a teacher. I spent my working career as a farmer, an engineer, an administrator, and a public servant. The one thing that is constant throughout that varied life has been my love of music and involvement through church and community with music of all kinds. I grew up in Wapalo, a county seat town in southeast Iowa. We went through the school music ritual of picking out a musical instrument in fifth grade. I chose the trombone. Mr. Cross was our band teacher. Times were different in the mid-50s. I arrived for my first lesson on my chosen instrument. Mr. Cross was smoking a cigarette and had a large ashtray overflowing with used butts on the windowsill. I wasn't sure how this was going to go, and I'm not sure my parents were too enthused either, but he clearly loved music and kids, and my, music, my future became sealed after we got over our initial uh, unease. Mr. Sp Cross spent his career in that little town, teaching band all the time and vocal music when needed. He demanded excellence from his students, and he got it. In Mr. Cross' second year of teaching, he took his high school marching band to a number one rating in state marching contest. That tradition continued for 53 straight years. It outlasted lasted Mr. Cross by a few years, although even in retirement, he would be out helping the band. I was present for numbers 13 through 60. My children were there for 37 through 41 and 50 through 53. I learned that my marching steps needed to be 22.5 inches long in order to squeeze eight steps into five yards. I also learned that we were expected to be at the field for practice at 7 a.m. and no excuse would suffice if we were late. Mr. Cross was also unique in that band at our school was just as important as athletics. Band members show up to support high school athletics and athletes showed up to support the band. During my high school years, we won conference championships in football, basketball, wrestling, and track. Each of those teams contained band members who wouldn't have considered dropping band to participate in something else. 
Excellence was expected in all endeavors, and if your effort was lacking, you heard about it. Excellence was expected in all endeavors, sorry. He produced many band members who went on to march and perform at Iowa State, the University of Iowa, and other schools, and many of his athletes helped work their way through college by performing in jazz bands or dance bands. Yes, those things still existed in the 60s and 70s. Mr. Cross was also the faculty supporter for the National Honor Society and placed academic achievement on the same plane as physical or musical achievement. He formed and directed pit orchestras to accompany high school musicals. If ever one of his musicians or students was not participating in those productions, he would want to know why and offer support to promote their involvement. Eventually, Mr. Cross retired in the early 1980s. At about that same time, I moved back to Wapolo to take up a career in farming. First, because I know you've been thinking about it, he had quit smoking by now, but Mr. Cross was nothing if not energetic. So in his retirement, he get, gathered any of his old students who were still in the area, and he started the old cat theater players and singers. He wrote music, and he wrote plays, and he cajoled people into performing twice a year. The plays were hokey, they were slapstick, but they helped make our community a better place. The tradition still moves on to this day. He also took about 16 men from the community and formed a men's glee club that performed in any church that would have us in Southeast Iowa. We sang gospel, hymns, and other congregational favorites. We sang with joy and gusto. We certainly didn't adhere very well to Dr. Rohde's teaching about beauty of tone and enunciation, but we made up for it with volume and enthusiasm. For 20 years, that group met in Mr. Cross' garage every Monday night. Mr. Cross finally had to give it up when he turned 90 and didn't hear so well anymore. And some of us didn't hear so well anymore either. It was about three weeks ago that I got word that Mr. Cross had passed at the age of 96. Within a couple of hours, former members of the Glee Club reached out and were asked to sing for the funeral. The Glee Club had been inactive for about eight years now, and several of them had passed away in the intervening years. But that day, about a dozen men, average age around 70, showed up to send Hal off the way he would have wanted. We were bankers, welders, factory workers, farmers, and public servants. We hadn't practiced, and we certainly weren't polished, but it was our tribute to the man who instilled in me, and many others, a deep love of music and appreciation of community. I want to share with you the simple song that we sent Hal out with. The quality could be better, but the feeling is real.
Good morning again and welcome back. This is Aaron Coleman, our host uh, of the Duane Choral Society Singathon. Uh, this morning at this time, we were going to have one of our members, Sarah Smith, joining us to tell us a little bit about herself and she would be performing a few pieces for us. Unfortunately, due to a family emergency, Sarah was unable to join us this morning and wasn't able to get us anything to play for you. So at this point, what we're going to be doing is we'll be featuring, uh, featuring a few minutes of some of our, the Des Moines Choral Society performing a few of our pieces for us during this time period. You know, again, we wish Sarah the best and hope everything is well with her and her family. And so, but again, we'll be featuring a few minutes of the Des Moines Choral Society performing for you at this point.
Good afternoon. We've now just crossed over the noon hour, and thank you for continuing to listen to the Des Moines Choral Society's Singathon. I want to thank Eric Greenlee for the videos that you just saw there for putting those together for us. So, Eric, thank you for all the hard work that you've done on that. Joining me now for a short conversation here is going to be Dr. Jim Rohde, our conduct artistic director and conductor of the Des Moines Choral Society. Good morning, Jim. How are you today? Or good afternoon. Well, I'm 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 great. I've had a great morning uh, listening to the singathon. It's just some moving moments, and I'm just so proud of our singers and what they've been doing. Yeah, it's been an incredible journey so far, and I know we've got several hours left of it. Um, so just kind of we'll just kind of get into things here quickly. Um, how long have you been conducting the Choral Society, and can tell us a little bit about some of your favorite moments of conducting the Choral Society. Yeah, uh, I was asked to think about that, and that was that was kind of a, initially a challenge to try to think about um, to think about which which pieces or which memories that I have that stand out. But I started in two thousand three. I was hired uh, in that January of two thousand three, and first thing to do is to prepare Carmina Burana actually for a performance with the Fort Dodge Sym Symphony, and then we went on and did that Civil War concert at at the Civic Center that, that later that spring. So it's been 18 years. And uh, in thinking about, um, you know, if I was to go through all the programs and just start thumbing through them, and I didn't, um, I'm sure I would come up and go, oh, that one, oh, that boy, they sang that well, what a great memory that is. And I could, I'm sure I could, I could talk for quite a while about the memories of, um, of what, what, what the group did. But I just stepped away from that and I said, okay, what are some, what are things that just kind of hit me? And um, I guess the first one I want to mention is uh, several years ago when uh, one of our community members, uh, Ed Collinette, um, uh, bid at our, at our fundraiser. Um, he bid to be a guest conductor at our, at our Christmas concert. And uh, Ed didn't know how to conduct and uh, but he just he he loved music and so he came up maybe three times to Ames so we could just learn some ideas about how how to conduct and with his Italian background we chose a piece and rec I recommended to him uh, Jesu Bambino and so um, the orchestra was there for for that piece and Ed got up up to conduct it and um, it was really a thrill for him, and we recognized that thrill. And uh, there might have been some times where there were six beats to be conducted, and he might have conducted seven during that time or whatever. But we all stayed together, and uh, I just remember sitting out there in the front row watching this. And for me, just seeing the, the joy on his face, and then the joy in the singer's faces as they sang this piece, and uh, Jonathan Stern was the concertmaster. He held things together with, you know, we could see his bowing as we went through this. And um, uh, just the outpouring of love that was there in our singers is part of my memory. But the other part was that I could sit back and just listen to the choir. I'm usually up there in front of them working on things, but just to sit there and hear the beauty of the sound of the choir was really, really a nice memory. So that, that one came to mind. Another one, um, uh, let's see, hang on, just, if you're getting some sound I'm hearing, hang on a second, that's my, that's my heater, give me a second here. Uh, we'll be fine with that, um, let's not worry about that there too much, Jim, it's just one of those things, that's part of a live broadcast, so okay. it's just, uh, my dog's already photobombed us a couple of times, so let's not worry about that too much. But um, right. I know you I mentioned on, being able to sit in the background and listen to it. It's kind of, I imagine it's probably similar when we had uh, Mac Wilberg in helping us out as well. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that's, that's another, see, I did, I even forgot about that one. And that was, that's a great memory too, just being able to, to present the choir to him to conduct. I wanted to mention also a piece by uh, uh, Eric Eschenwalds, who's a Latvian composer and really one of my favorite choral composers of writing today. I've done quite a number of his, of, of his pieces, both uh, uh, with the Des Moines Choral Society and also at the university. Um, 
but he wrote a Passion and Resurrection, and this is about a half hour work in a contemporary work. It was a challenging piece, and it was for um, it was for choir, string orchestra, a solo quartet that we actually was spaced out in Saint in Saint Ambrose, and they they sang this little mantra every once in a while. They would come in with this mantra. They'd be spaced in different places. It was almost a Renaissance like almost a Renaissance-like um, uh, piece that they would come in. But the main focus was uh, the soprano solo, who was uh, played the part of Mary. And um, uh, uh, our sweet member, uh, uh, Alyssa Connolly, uh, prepared that. And Alyssa, uh, I handed this to her, and she, she looked at it over a week, and it's really a, it requires a professional singer to do this thing. She said, I'd like to try it. And boy, did she, did she ever fly with that. I mean, it's dramatic, it's tender, it's got high C, I think high D at some point. I mean, it really was, was something. So she, she sang this thing beautifully. And at the end of this piece, uh, uh, the uh, uh, she walks out as Mary singing the words Ra Raboni, Raboni or Rabbi, as she stepped out and kept singing her repeated pitches as she walked out the aisle, down the center aisle of the church, through the solo quartet, uh, while this mantra was going on behind her, out the back door, uh, out onto the street. We just watched this all just go. Uh, it's a thrilling moment. I wish I could have been in the audience to actually see it. But what what struck me about it too, I just was so proud of her. But also, um, we don't get standing ovations uh, in the middle of concerts. Um, but that day we did, um, because it was it was really one of those one of those great moments. Um, I also have to think about the Brahms Requiem, which is one of the great. One of my favorite pieces, maybe yeah, just right up there, is just a handful of favorite pieces. This composer is a genius, and uh, certainly one of the top ten. The Requiem is certainly one of the top ten choral orchestral works in Western music. Um, we sang it first um, with the Des Moines Choral Society with forehand piano, Elaine. Uh, Wedeking and uh, Michael Bagby, a student at, of ours at Iowa State, played the piano part. And boy, that was so fulfilling, um, just um, just with the piano. Great composer, knew what to do. And the, um, the following year, we were asked to sing it again for the uh, AGO Regional Convention. That's the American Guild of Organists. Regional Convention at the Basilica there in University Avenue, and uh, with full orchestra and a full house of, of people, that was that was also a, a very fulfilling fulfilling experience. And I have to mention the the uh, Bach B minor Mass. Um, we didn't do the whole thing, but we did a good chunk of it, and uh, uh, that is probably the most. I think many many of my colleagues would would agree the. Uh, the greatest um, achievement in, in composition. Um, just the, the intellect and the spiritual intellect that's, that's involved in that piece is, to me, it's just jaw dropping page after page. So, um, yeah, we, and it's not just that we, we got through it, but actually we sang it beautifully. I just remember being so pleased and proud of the, of, of the way they sang it. The soloists that we had from the choir um, tackling these these major solos and and, uh, and and very challenging, sparkling and tender music. It's all over, but it's it was it was a great great experience. I have to also mention that I I, I get a thrill with Elaine Hagenberg's music that we get a chance to um, to uh, experience that firsthand uh, and kind of watch it hatch in a way right 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 in front of us uh, elaine just told me the other day that she looked up that we have uh, given eight world premieres of her of her pieces and uh, uh, each time to be able to dive in sing them and to have her giving comments about it 
and bringing their final realization to the to the piece is has been really really fun and and satisfying. Um, coming up uh, tomorrow would have been our first Sunday night rehearsal at this at St. Ambrose for our annual Christmas concert. Um, and the singers are going to know that uh, you know what I'm talking about here because that is each year that is one of my favorite things to do is to go into that that week ahead of time because we've been in the this our re, our rehearsal hall and now for the first time we get to come in and sing in an acoustic and a space uh, that really uh, enhances uh, the music enhances the choir and. Um, uh, uh, I get to just, there aren't any instrumentalists there. It's just us. And I get to step back at times, walk down the aisle and just listen to the choir as they're singing. And any number of times I have said to myself when I'm standing back there, I wish that my colleagues around the country could just drop in right now and, and just hear five minutes of this of what a once a week community group can actually do. Uh, the sounds of the choir, the overall sounds of it, uh, and the expression of it, the intonation, the balance, um, just all of the expression of that has been, uh, it, it's really, really pretty exciting. I'm very, just very proud of it. So I miss that. I miss that moment where I can step back and say, well, there's, Hey, there's my choir. Let me listen to this for a while. So um, uh, that's that's also a, a, a pretty pretty fulfilling moment. But I think to to wrap up, um, I would say uh, speaking of fulfillment, um, if I can see and th and I feel this way about my choirs at at Iowa State as well. But if I can see my singers walking off the stage and feeling like they're nine feet tall um that's that's my fulfillment that's that's uh, why i do what i do basically um i think you know as much as i love the music um the music becomes i hate to say this but almost secondary to the opportunity that through music our people get a chance to express themselves and to be a part of something that's bigger than they can be on their own to share in this social event um, that's, uh, uh, when I say social, I'm not talking about party, but I'm talking about this sense of community um, that, uh, you know, through that hard work and being able to, um, uh, well, being able to present something like that and feel that sense of accomplishment and let that reach each person can feel like their inner voice can can speak and in some cases can really cry out through through this music this is this is kind of what it's all about for me you so, know i can't agree more with you on that dr Rody. i know our time is starting to run a little short here so you know i want to say i appreciate you joining us here for this live segment on our singathon but yeah having walked off that stage afterwards i can't agree more the sense of accomplishment having been in the group from day one listening to the struggle of the notes to the end product that we see when we actually get up in front of the audience is an incredible incredible um yeah accomplishment yeah and uh, you know when it for for me being able to work with really lovely people every week uh that just ties it up into being just a, a great experience no, I, I agree totally there on that, uh, Dr. Rohde. And, you know, again, I want to thank you for your time here this morning, this afternoon. And joining us here in the next moment is going to be one of our singers, Deborah Svek Carstens. Uh, she's going to be telling us a little bit about what she has for us here, what we'll be hearing from her coming up momentarily. So, Deborah, how are you this afternoon? I'm good. Thanks, Aaron. It's great to be here. Great to have you here. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you'll be performing for us today and a little bit about your time with the Choral Society. Sure. Well, I'm Deborah Svek Karstens and I've been with the Choral Society since 2000, so 20 something years. Um, and it's been just a wonderful opportunity to make music with others, um, something I absolutely love to do. Um, 
and like others have expressed this morning, just um, fills me with joy. Um, each Sunday night, I come home, you know, filled and ready for the week. So, and um, just want to say a quick shout out and thank you to everyone who has helped to organize today, um, to the board and those behind the scenes who have put this all together. I'm so appreciative of that. Um, today I'm singing, I have a special guest with me for a few uh, traditional Christmas songs. My niece, Natalie, agreed to join me. So she'll be joining me for a few songs. Um, then I um, will be singing a couple of spirituals. I wanted to put those in um, because I know this year has been a challenging one for so many people, um, for so many of us. And I think these spirituals offer us an opportunity to lament and um, an opportunity to um, find hope. So hope, I hope that you all enjoy those. And then I'll be finishing up with Still, 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 which is a traditional Christmas piece. Um, and that one is very special to me. I've been singing that um, for many years now, really since um, a kid in church uh, on Christmas Eve. And so it's, it's a special song that, that I enjoy performing um, that I sing every year at my church. So um, well, yeah, certainly glad to hear that, Deborah. I know um, it's been an unusual year to put it uh, mildly for all of us, especially those of us who perform. And I can't agree with you more. It's always that Sunday evening rehearsal going into it. Sometimes you just need, you don't want to be there, but when you're done, it's set the week for you. Absolutely. Um, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and just it's, thanks for everybody for tuning in today and for um, sponsoring and donating. It's, it's so great to see the, the outpouring of um, support for our organization. And we can't wait to get back to performing again live for everyone. I can't agree with you more. I'm, I am so looking forward to being in that rehearsal hall on Sunday evenings again with everybody. Uh, just a quick reminder for you, if you haven't donated already, you can click the link in the description on our YouTube stream right there. That'll take you to our website to, to donate. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose and if you ever saw it you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? And how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, will go down in his story. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes.
good hello good morning again welcome or good afternoon excuse me and welcome back to the des moines choral society singathon um joining me here is emily meyer one of our singers and emily welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon tell us a little bit about yourself and what you'll be singing as well as how long you've been involved with the choral society Hi, hi i'm emily meyer um, I think I have a little leg to my video, so sorry about that. Um, my connection maybe isn't working that well. I, uh, I've i been singing for Choral Society. This this would be my fourth year, so three years of actual active singing in this weird year. Um, I actually sang for Dr. Rohde at Iowa State for four years in Iowa State Singers, and before that, I sang for him in an Iowa State uh, honor choir during high school. So I've sung for him since he came here to Iowa, so I've been singing for him since 2002. So then been, been a great time. Um, today, I've got a few just fun little Christmas classics, I suppose. Um, White Christmas, which I always have loved singing. Um, Let It Snow. I've got uh, uh, I'll Be, or I'm Dreaming. Eh, no. Now I can't think of what I got on there. <laughs> a Merry Did You Know. And then my fourth one is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Um, I chose the Judy Garland version. I thought it's... A little more fitting to this year so the lyrics are a little bit different you may notice well you know i it's anything that's a little different and fitting this year is probably appropriate at this point emily so thank you um uh, just as a reminder for everyone um you can always donate in our description there if there's a link down in the description box under our youtube stream to go to our website and donate otherwise uh we'll be looking forward to hearing emily here momentarily so Thank you again, and we'll look forward to having you guys again soon. A little bit different. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you've kissed your little baby You've kissed the face of God Oh, Mary, did you know? Ooh, oh, Mary, did you know? The blind see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the tongue will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Oh, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Ooh, 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 oh, Mary, did you know?
Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year all our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay Next year all our troubles Will be miles away Once again as in olden days Happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us will be near to us once more someday soon we all will be together if the fates allow until then we'll have to muddle through somehow so have yourself a I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten and children Listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I days be merry and bright, and may all your Christmases be white. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen To hear sleigh bells in the snow May your 
days be May and bright, and may all your Christmas. Good afternoon and welcome back. I'm Aaron Coleman, your host for this time period on the Des Moines Choral Society's Singathon. Joining me here, actually, again this, this afternoon now will be our treasurer, Lee Henderson. And Lee is actually going to be performing for us a little bit. So, Lee, tell us a little bit of, I, you've probably told us already a little bit about yourself, but tell us a little bit about what you'll be performing for us today. Yeah, uh, thanks, Aaron, and thanks for having me back. You're doing a great job, and uh, thanks to everyone who is uh, participating today. It's it's making a huge um, effect on the choir. Uh, I'm performing um, a couple of songs on guitar, uh, but my children and my wife are playing a couple of duets on the piano. Uh, my, my wife and son will be playing uh, Jolly Old St. Nick, Jingle Bells, and Away in the Manger. And my daughter, who's only seven, Margaret, is playing some classics, such as Hot Cross Buns, 
Wind in the Trees and some other songs. Um, so we had a lot of fun putting this together. I'm great. That's great. Glad to hear that, Lee. I know it's been a lot of fun, actually, a lot of fun actually hosting this thing today. It's gone very well for us. Uh, one of the things, like I've reminded everybody before, is if you haven't already donated, please click the link that's in the description of our YouTube stream um, and donate to the Coral Society because every contribution certainly helps. And also just to remind you, if you go to our website, dmcoral.org, you can find more information not only about the Coral Society and how to in to join us in the future, but you can also find out some information about our one of our upcoming projects, the Messiah Project, which is going to be premiered next weekend, and that'll be streamed to us live on YouTube as well as there we'll have um, archived versions of it through other media. So you know, please take a look at that information. Go out there, donate, and keep this ball rolling for us because it's been a great help. And here comes Lee with his family. My name is Margaret and I'm going to be playing in the jungle and doorbell. to dedicate this song, these songs to all of our, all of my fam fam family members. I'm Kate. I'll be accompanying my son, Mo, and we would like to wish everyone a very merry holiday season.
This is a way in a manger. Hello, my name is Lee Henderson, and I'm a board member for the Choral Society, and tonight I'll be playing a song called Little Martha. The song is dedicated to my mother. Tonight I'll be playing one more song, and this is a song I wrote a long time ago but have never given a name to. I'll do my best to play it for you tonight.
Well, welcome back, everybody. Thank you again for joining the Des Moines Choral Society's first uh, virtual singathon. Of course, we miss being with all of you and sharing our love for music with all of you in person. Uh, I'm joined today by one of my uh, esteemed choir mates, uh, Wendy Pausch. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thanks for hosting. Of, of course, of course. And thanks for singing. I know uh, I'm eager to hear you sing today, and I know our audience is too. Um, you know, uh, one thing I'm always curious about is uh, with our choir mates is, is hearing their story about what brought them to the Des Moines Choral Society. And I'm curious, what, what drew you to our group? Uh, it's all my husband's fault. <laughs> I moved to Des Moines when we got married. And so I was without a choir for a few years. And then I started really missing it. And I started Googling local choirs. Uh, and it turns out my husband goes way back with Elaine Hagenberg, our uh, composer residents, they went to college together and he had been to Des Moines Choral Society concerts and uh, had heard them. And he's like, just, just audition for DMCS. They're really good. They're the best one. So I did. And he was right. They're the best one. I've never regretted it. It's been nine seasons now and I really miss you all. <laughs> yeah, I, I really miss seeing you and, and everybody else as well. Um, and uh, as we kind of transition into uh, the next uh, phase of the singathon, do you want to give the audience a little bit of a rundown of what you'll be singing today? Uh, yeah, we are. I roped my husband and my kids into singing with me. Uh, none of us really love being recorded, but they're troopers and they're awesome. And we're singing some really 
old carols that I grew up with that uh, you'll see. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again, Wendy, and uh, hope everyone enjoys Wendy Pouch from the Des Moines Choral Society. Sing we now rejoice, now raise to heaven our voice. He from whom joy streameth, for in a manger lies. Not so brightly beameth the sun in yonder skies. Thou my Savior heart, thou my Savior heart. to me, I cannot rise to thee, cheer my wearied spirit, a pure and holy child, through thy grace and merit, bless Jesus, Lord, most mild, draw me unto thee, draw me unto Shall joy be found where but on heavenly ground, where the angels sing with all his saints unite? Sweetest praise is bringing in heavenly joy and light. Oh, that we were there! Oh, that we were there! Shepherds guard and angels sing 
pays days to bring him long, the babe, the song of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate, where ox and lamb are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. Nail spear shall pierce him through, the cross he'll bear for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise the song on high, the virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. Lo, how our rose stem hath sprung of Jesse's lineage coming as men of old have sung it came a floweret bright amid the cold of winter when half spent was the night. I say it was foretold it, the rose I have in mind. With Mary we behold it, the Virgin Mother kind To show God's love aright She bore to us a Savior When half spent was the night A flower whose fragrance tender with sweetness fills the air, dispel with glorious splendor the darkness everywhere. True man, yet very God, from sin and death now save us. And share our every load. Joy to the world, the Lord is. Let earth receive her King, let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Sound 
Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more the sins and sorrows grow. Well, uh, welcome back, everybody, and thank you, Wendy, for your performances. I'm here now with uh, one of my one of my longest friends, uh, Courtney Enan. Hi, Courtney. How's it going? Hi, Avi. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me on. It's good to see you too. Uh, to, to everybody watching at home, Courtney Enan is uh, one of our wonderful singers, but is also on our board of directors. Um, and kind of a fun fact, you know, Courtney and I have known each other for a long time, over a decade now. We spent a lot of time together in college. And, you know, Courtney, a lot of that time was spent singing in the Warp Choir together. And I know, and you know how much that experience means to both of us. So I'm curious, can you talk a little bit about how much, you know, being able to sing in the Des Moines Choral Society means to you? Yes, that time in Warper Choir was so special to me as it was to you. Um, and I'm just so lucky that I get to sing with Des Moines Choral Society now because there are a lot of similarities uh, between Warper Choir singing in college and singing with the Des Moines Choral Society here in Des Moines. We have a fantastic artistic director and accompanist. We also get to have great music and um, I get to sing with a community of friends. I get to talk with other music educators and also people that have all different types of um, occupations around Des Moines and the metro area. Yeah and you talked a little bit about being a music educator. I mean how does being in the Choral Society help you do your job? Well, I get to sing with adults, which is different than singing with my uh, five through 10 year olds, and which is super fun, but I get to sing with adults and sing lots of different types of music and get different ideas from the Des Moines Choral Society for what I do. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Courtney. And thanks for being here. And everybody, uh, please enjoy Courtney and his music today. My own, more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you.
Well, welcome back, everybody, and thank you, Courtney, for uh, that beautiful music. Uh, I am now here with Michael Gukin. Hey, Michael, how are you, man? Hey, bye. I'm really good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to see you. I miss seeing you on our Sundays, uh, but it's good to see you and our fellow choir mates uh, here uh, virtually. Um, you know, Michael, I, I know you're a music teacher, uh, but in your free time, you kind of keep your plate pretty busy. I know you're you're not only the accompanist for our choir, but you also teach piano lessons, and I know that you know, one of your students who I know very well, uh, misses you uh, dearly, that is my wife. Uh, so I know she's anxious to, to get back together and, and, and take piano lessons with you again. But, you know, I'm curious, Michael, for the sake of our audience, I know you grew up in a family that's, that's very community oriented. You know, your dad is in public service, you teach in a public school. So I'm kind of curious, how does a choral society serve the community and, and kind of what's the value of the choir uh, to the community? I think the short answer is um, the Des Moines Choral Society just provides quality choral music. And I think that is just so um, necessary in this time, especially through this year, to provide music to the community. And I think that's what Des Moines Choral Society does best. That's great. Well, uh, I'm glad you're part of our group, Michael. Thanks for, thanks for being here today. Do you want to give the audience a little bit of a rundown of what you're performing today? Sure, yeah. The first piece I'm going to perform is E. Giorni by uh, Italian composer Ludovico Einaudi. The second one is The First Noel by, arranged by Danny Calhoun. And the third one is Away in a Manger, arranged by Mac Wilberg, which we know um, in the Des Moines Choral Society very well. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Michael. Thanks for being here. Thanks for performing. And everybody, this is Michael Gukin. Thanks.
Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the
All right. Well, thank you, Michael, for that, uh, for those wonderful performances. Uh, I am back with uh, one of our fellow, one of my fellow board members, Emily Stork. Hi, Emily. Hi, Abai. Um, yeah, I, it is a pleasure to serve on the board of the Des Moines Choral Directors or Des Moines Choral Society with Abai. I serve in the vice president's role of development. So looking for ways to, you know, make sure that the Des Moines Choral Society is integrated in the community and also raising money. So, yeah. you know, nothing supports itself on its own. So we are always looking for new and um, exciting ways like this singathon to raise money. Absolutely. Well, and Emily, I, you know, that's a that's a really good point. Um, and I, I'm curious too. you know, we have a lot in common. We're both lawyers. We actually worked at the same law firm for a while and now serve in in-house counsel roles. But, um, you know, we also went to Lutheran colleges, you know, although, you know, I know I went to the better one, Warford, which, you know, I know that's disputed, but whatever, we'll just we'll just go with it for now. Um, but, you know, I'm curious, tell me a little bit about how your experience singing in the Nordic Choir at Luther led you to wanting to be a member or, or serve the Choral Society? Well, first I have to say, I, I dispute, um, fully dispute the fact that Wartburg is a superior Iowa Lutheran college. Um, I just had such a wonderful experience at Luther that was so amplified by singing in the Nordic Choir under the direction of Weston Noble, which was really, a, you know, a life-changing experience. I don't think anyone who has performed in a choir before can say that it doesn't somehow make their life somehow more, um, more enriched. And so I just wanted to share that experience with others. And by supporting the Des Moines Choral Society, I believe I allow others in the community to have that same choral communal experience. Hello, I'm Emily Stork, and I serve on the board of directors for the Des Moines Choral Society. I'm excited to share four performances with you today. The first is Canticle of the Spirit by Eleanor Daly. Eleanor Daly is a Canadian contemporary composer, primarily of church music. This is a setting of a text by a 12th century German nun, Hildegard of Bingen. This is originally set for essay, but today I'll be performing it solo. The second piece I get to duet with my daughter, Ellen. It is a French carol, Bring a Torch, Jeanette Isabella. The third piece is pretty recognizable from a Rodgers and Hammerstein musical that you may have already heard of, The Sound of Music. It was over 20 years ago that I performed the role of Fräulein Maria in my high school's production. And the fourth and final piece is Jesu Bambino by Pietro Jan, an Italian composer that spent the majority of his career in the United States. In addition to composing music, he was a talented music educator. One of his very famous students was Cole Porter. I am accompanied on three of these pieces by Soren Kiel, a, a fabulous pianist that I get to work with at the St. Pius X Catholic Church in Urbandale, which is also where we recorded some of our videos. So thank you so much for tuning in today and for your support. I hope you enjoy. Bye. <laughs>
Ready, set, play. Thank you. 
leaders of this organization. And the reason we brought Sue and uh, Jane and Dr. Rody together is to talk a little bit about the history of the choir. Uh, as you might've heard earlier, I sang in the Warper Choir, which has a rich history, but uh, the Des Moines Choral Society uh, has a rich history as well, uh, just like many other choirs uh, around the state and the country. So uh, without further ado, I'll kick it over to Sue Breenheld uh, to give us a little bit of a quick summary of the history, and, uh, and then she will uh, probably kick it over to Jane and Dr. Rody to chime in as well. So Sue? Thank you. Yeah, the Des Moines Choral Society is, has been around for quite a while for our or arts organization. We started in 1979. Marion Hall pulled the group together. And at that point, it was a chorus of about 250 people to perform with the Des Moines Symphony at the very first concert at the Civic Center. And we did Beethoven's Ninth. And it, the group had so much fun. I was not in that group. The group had so much fun that they decided to maintain it as a chorus. I joined the group in 79, or rather in 82. And I've sung most all of the years since then. Um, Dr. Hall passed away in 79 and or shortly after that. And we went through a couple of guest conductors, but we've had, before Dr. Rohde, we had two other conductors after Marion, and that was Bob Mollison and Janet Davis. And each one of them has brought us forward, you know, has, has brought something else to the group. Bob Mollison started to, an audition process and started to shrink the size of the group a little bit more. And he took us to Carnegie Hall for the first time, which was an amazing experience. We sang with John Rutter conducting, he did the Rutter Gloria. Um, Janet came along when Bob retired mm -hmm. and she focused on educational outreach. So we got to go visit the schools and to see kids and bring, bring music to them and a lot more 20th century music and song. Um, tell the story was one of her biggest sayings. You know, we have short eye now with Dr. Rohde, but tell the story was hers. And, and she took us to Carnegie Hall. And Jane, I think you were on that trip a second time then. I was. And it was the first time I had ever been to Carnegie Hall. So I was um, very excited about going to New York. And that was the first time for me as well with a group of folks that I just enjoyed so much. Um, there were so many things that were highlights of the, of the trip. And actually, as much as Carnegie Hall sounds like that would be the best thing that you've ever done, it was probably not the top of my list of things to do. We were there just before the Twin Towers were bombed. And we took a ride around uh, in the water to, by Ellis Island uh, and then just did lots of exploring. We also got to see the producers which was just then being uh, nominated as a particularly wonderful show. The thing with the uh, Stravinsky or the Carnegie Hall concert was that we, um, we sang a Stravinsky number, which is interesting. If you've never heard Stravinsky, you might want to listen or maybe not, but the orchestra came and that was the first time that we had ever sung with them. We didn't rehearse. And at one point they got off beat and Janet said that we looked at her like deer in headlights, which was true. It was the most frightening thing I think I've experienced in singing. And we just kept going with her and we finished and the orchestra finished some after us. So that was quite an experience for all of us. Um, after, after Janet left, we, um, had a season of guest conductors as well. And from those folks, we selected Jim Rohde and he graciously uh, agreed to come and drive from Ames every day, every week and um, conduct us. And uh, from there is history because we have grown immensely in the 17 years that Jim has been a part of our group. And at that point, I'd like to turn this over to Jim and talk a little bit about, have him talk a little bit about what he sees in the growth of the chorus, what has, was significant for him in watching us grow over the last 17 years and some of the highlights for him as well. So take it away, Dr. Rohde. Well, thanks. I did talk about some of my highlights earlier today around noon with, um, with Aaron, um, but I think it'd be fun to even hear more about the Stravinsky Symphony of Psalms and uh, <laughs> 
uh, how that all worked out. I'm trying to imagine how that would be, but uh, uh, wow. Well, anyway, it's been great for me. This is my 18th year uh, with the with the Coral Society, and uh, uh, it's been a great a great ride. When I started back in um, January of 2003, we quickly had to get together a perform uh, pull together Carmina Burana and take it up to Fort Dodge to sing with the Fort Dodge Symphony. So that was the that was the first step, and then that spring came. The first of about five program programmatic uh, concerts, and it was uh, Iowa in the Civil War. Um, Ann Stelzer really spearheaded that, along with uh, the other four that uh, that that she brought forth. Just great ideas. Uh, this was this was successful, um, and um, uh, Hal Holberg came in and was our narr narrator and 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 that was it that was my my first year just give me a second every once in a while my uh my heater wants to come on here no it's a little noisy um i live in a great old house so that's that's uh <clears throat> that's that but we've had some nice collaborations over the years i, I i'm going to quickly mention some of those those initial, uh, those programmatic pieces. We did a, a concert on motherhood called Mother Iowa. We did a piece on our environment called Essential Water. We did a piece, uh, a concert on immigration called Destination Iowa, where we, we uh, 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 celebrate the immigration of, of peoples to Iowa. Uh, we had, did a civil rights concert and for that received uh, the Friends of Iowa Civil Rights Award. Um, so we've had some collaborations along the way. Speaking of collaborations, we've worked with the, um, with the Heartland Children's Choir and Mac Wilberg. We brought Mac in just a few years ago and performed a number of his pieces, um, and including his Requiem. But we had, you know, we, we thought it'd be fun to get him here because so many Christmases we performed some of his arrangements, which are so colorful, and it has so many there that we, uh, I've just really enjoyed it. I know, I know the choir has, has enjoyed it as, as well. Um, but um, uh, we've had a chance to work with some nice, uh, or some, some very good clinicians along the way. My close friend, Rick Biella, has come in and worked work with uh, Stacy Gibbs, uh, up, you know, one of the foremost arrangers of uh, choral music. He's he's, uh, he's been with us as well. We were part of a um, part of a um, a um, a group of people that commissioned him for a work. So it, it's just been a lot of fun. So what's happened with the group over the years is that it's. It's really grown. It's grown in in, in uh, uh, numbers. It's grown in beauty, I think, and the way the choir is, is, has sung is, I think, back to where we were back 18 years ago to where we are today. And um, I think this is in part, um, the, there are different reasons for it. One is, one is uh, that we've got um, an influx of the good young musicians that have, that have come into the group. First of all, they come in because they are um, they're they're just finished their college work, and they say I got to keep singing. There are others that finish their college work, they dropped out, and then they realize later I got to keep singing, and they come back. And then others are just moving into town and looking for 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 a choir. But they bring with them a great number of uh, uh, of skills uh, and um, and youth to the group. And that's been that's been an, an, an important component. Also, the continuity. We've got people that have stayed in for all these years, and without them there to be a really part of the you know part of the drive here, um, uh, we wouldn't be what we are today. Uh, that year coming back year after year. If I had to start all over each year, that would be a whole other ballgame. But the people that have committed and been dedicated over all these years that foundation is, is, uh, is truly important. Um, 
I also want to make a quick comment about the growth of it, um, acknowledging Elaine Wedeking, who over all those years for me has been at the keyboard. I could throw anything at her and she was so solid there and the level of professionalism that really, you know, really helped us, us along. And now I've got Michael Gukin, who's our uh, accompanist, who is the same. I mean, I just throw anything to him and he's for sure, let's go. And he just, he works it out. So I've been blessed with accompanists along the way. But overall, I want to say that the, uh, that the spirit and the character of the people with whom I work, put that in with that mixture, that's what makes it, I think, very, very successful. The quality of the people, their skills and their spirit, personal character. All of that means a great deal to me. I've talked Jim, to I think, Jim, I think that's true. This is Sue. I, the, the spirit of the group and the character of the people and that special time that we have together, it's the preparing that it, the concerts are lovely, but we wouldn't sing without the preparation and the teaching that you brought to it. And I think one of the things that after seeing all the directors that we've had, you've brought us a beauty of tone and a sensibility as a choir that I think we've continued to grow with you. And I, we so much appreciate your work and, well, and the I, voices that you've brought from us. It's hmm. an amazing thing. And thank you. One thing I would well, like to- thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jane. Okay. Uh, one thing I would like to add is that when I first started 23 years ago with the Choral Society, it was probably at least 80 or 85 percent, I would say, mature singers. I was going to say old people, but not really. Um, and maybe 15 to 20 percent younger voices. And I would guess now we are maybe at 85 uh, percent young boys, younger, I mean, um, high school or college grads. And just a few of us mature voices are left. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I noted is in our last concert, I was counting the number of tenors because it seemed like we, they, we were kind of overrun with tenors. We had way more tenors than we did baritones. How many choirs can ever think that they would be lucky enough to have more tenors mm -hmm. than baritone? And I think that's totally because of Dr. Rohde's um, ability to work with male voices. That's made a gigantic difference for our choir. So I thank you for that. Yes. I, I, I appreciate that. I want to squeeze in one quick, one quick word here and that is- And, and Dr. Rohde, we do have to wrap up here, but go ahead and finish. Yeah, I just want to say, if you want to audition for the choir, contact me. All right, well, thank you to Sue, Dr. Rohde, and Jane. And as Jane mentioned, there are a lot of young voices in the choir, including myself. Thank you very much. Uh, but also uh, <laughs> Haley Gibbons, who is uh, one of the choir directors at uh, uh, West Des Moines Valley High School. And we have Haley here today. How are you doing, Haley? I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. It was really fun to hear Dr. Rohde talk about, um, talk about the choir. I miss it so much. Yes, me too, me too. And, and Haley, you know, you spend a lot of time with our choir, but you also spend a lot of time with your own choirs. Uh, you, as I said, you are the one of the directors at, at Valley. And, um, I, you know, I was curious, uh, we have a lot of educators in this group. Can you talk to our audience a little bit about how uh, you singing in this choir really adds to your ability to be a better teacher and a better conductor for your choirs? Yeah, absolutely. I always say that I, I joined Des Moines, Des Moines Choral Society and it became my weekly professional development. Um, I'm really, really lucky to be able to be surrounded not only by these other great singers um, in Choral Society, but to learn directly from Dr. Rohde as well. Um, if you have had me as a choir director like my former students, they all know that I've become obsessed with short eye um, as well as Dr. Rohde is, uh, but that's just one little example. Um, I also take a lot of our repertoire and a lot of it's um, usable for my choirs as well. It definitely has made me a better, uh, not only a better singer, um, but also a better educator to remember what it's like to be on the other side of the podium. And I definitely miss it right now, that's for sure. Yeah, well, thanks, Kelly. I know we all miss it and I know how much we appreciate Dr. Rohde's leadership. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna kick it over to Haley for her performances uh, with her and her singers. Thanks, Haley. Thank you so much.
place is assured I carry with me heaven's grand design Gloria, Gloria I will sing the name of the Lord and he will make me shine and I will be
And we're back. Thank you to Haley and her uh, wonderful singers at West Des Moines Valley High School for being part of our singathon today. Uh, they just all did a fantastic job. Uh, we're back now with another one of my fellow uh, choir mates, uh, Melissa Crum. Melissa, how's it going? Good, thank you. Good, good. It's so good to see you, and I'm glad that you're staying warm by the fire uh, through through the singathon and this uh, cold weather as we head into winter. Um, you know, Melissa, one thing that I just am always curious about with all of our uh, fellow choir mates is what what drew drew them to the choir, to the choir, the choral society. Uh, and, and specifically, more specifically, you know, choral music gen, um, and, and how uh, that plays an important part in your life. Oh my gosh, choral music is such an important part of my life. I've been singing in choirs since I was little, um, and it's been the highlight of every educational experience that I've had from elementary school all the way through college. Um, I didn't sing with a group while I was getting my master's degree, and oh, I missed it so much. Um, so that brought me to the Des Moines Choral Society. I sang under the direction of Dr. Rohde at Iowa State, and I know that he brings such a beauty of tone out of all of his singers and selects wonderful repertoire for us. And so the music we make together on Sunday evenings is just the highlight of my week and really my favorite form of self-care. Yeah, well, that's great, Melissa. I know that a lot of people share that share that feeling. Well, um, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa for her uh, songs. And uh, Melissa, thanks for joining us today. Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring, ting, tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Outside the snow is falling and friends are calling you. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together. Let's take the road before us and sing a chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, let's go. Let's look at the show. We're riding in a wonderland of snow. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, it's grand. Just hold me your hand. Our cheeks are nice and and comfy, cozy are we. We're snuggled up together like birds of a feather would be. Let's take the road before us and sing a chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. There's a Christmas party at the home of Farmer Gray. It'll be the perfect ending of a perfect day. At the fireplace while we watch the chestnuts pop, 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 pop. There's a happy feeling nothing in the world can buy. When we pass around the coffee and the pumpkin pie, it'll nearly look like a picture print by Courier and I. These wonderful things are the things we remember all through our lives. Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring, ting, tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Let's take the road before us and sing another chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with Baby, 
So okay. hurry down the chimney tonight Think of all the fun I've missed Think of all the fellas that I haven't kissed Next year I could be just as good If you check off my Christmas list ba doo be doo Santa baby I want a yacht and really that's not a lot Been an angel all year Santa baby So hurry down the chimney tonight Santa honey The one thing I really do need the deed to a platinum mine, Santa baby. So hurry down the chimney tonight. Santa cutie, fill my stocking with the duplex and checks. Sign your X on the line, Santa cutie, and hurry down the chimney tonight. Come and trim my Christmas tree with some decorations bought at Tiffany. I really do believe in you. Let's see if you believe in me. One little thing, a ring. I don't mean on the phone, Santa baby. So hurry down the chimney tonight. Hurry down the chimney tonight. Hurry tonight. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. Monster, Mr. Grinch, your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders. You've got garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. You're a vile one. Termites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I choose. I choose the seasick crocodile. You're a rotter, Mr. Grinch. You're the king of sinful socks. Your heart's a dead tomato splotch with moldy purple spots, Mr. Grinch. You're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. You nauseate me, Mr. Grinch, with a nauseous soup or nos. You're a crooked, jerky jockey 
Who rides a crooked horse, Mr. Grinch? Your soul is an appalling dump heap, overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of rubbish imaginable, mangled up, entangled up knots. You're a foul one. Full of unwashed socks, your soul is full of gunk, Mr. Grinch. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote, stink, stank, stunk. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. So being sleigh, hey, jingle bell, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse so being sleigh. Welcome back, everyone. My name's Emily Stork, and I am excited to host for the next hour and introduce some amazing singers. Thank you to Melissa for that fun performance. Oh my goodness. And her daughter and husband, just so sweet. Now I am joined right now with Erin Schultz, 
who is the director of choral music at Westminster Presbyterian Church here in Des Moines. And I am very excited to have him share his musical gift with you. Um, but while I introduce him, let me just say, Aaron, how was it that you got involved in the Des Moines Choral Society? Well, um, my wife, Jen, and I moved to Des Moines about a year and a half ago. So as soon as we moved, I wanted some outlet to sing and not direct. Um, so I did some research and discovered the Choral Society. And um, yeah, I actually sang under Dr. Rohde's direction as a middle schooler when he directed a state honors choir. So I was thrilled that he was here in Iowa and I had a chance to sing with him again. It is just continuously a small world. It is, yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, and Aaron, I was excited to see you are singing Yesu Bambino, kind of a, I don't know, beast of a song really, but a wonderful piece. Mm. And I'm just curious, when did you first pick that up? Um, singing or, or the... Or the song. The I, I actually uh, found these three um, pieces arranged by Mark Hayes really recently. So uh, within a few weeks of recording. So it's been it's been a fun, fun uh, project to work on. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your gift with us. And everyone, thank you so much for your support today.
When blossoms flower in me the snows upon a winter night was born the child the Christmas rose, the king of love and light. The angels sing, the shepherds sing, the grateful earth rejoice. And at his blessed birth, the stars their exaltation voiced. Oh, come, let us
I have to be the last one speaking. Well, welcome back everyone. Um, that was just fabulous, Erin. Thank you so much for sharing your gift with all of us. I am excited to be joined here by Devin Steve and I will introduce him in just one moment. But Devin and I share something in that we both were in choirs that were conducted in college by kind of giants in the choral music field. Uh, I had the opportunity to sing under Weston Noble, but Devin had the opportunity to sing under Dr. Anton Armstrong up at St. Olaf in Minnesota. So Devin, I'm just curious, what brought a Cleveland boy to Northfield, Minnesota? <laughs> well, through a number of experiences and, and opportunities to participate in choirs, um, they, I was able to really make those connections. I was in the American Boy Choir, and, and that connected me with uh, people out at St. Olaf, and I was fortunate enough to be selected for the St. Olaf Choir. Um, so it, it was a fantastic experience and a great opportunity. Yeah, and I understand being at St. Olaf is also how you found your way to Des Moines. Is that accurate? It is, absolutely. Um, my conductor, Dr. Armstrong, and um, international composer Ben Alloway is a local Des Moines, um, uh, Des Moinesite, is that the name for it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they both um, um, uh, contacted me about uh, an opening at Roosevelt High School, and, and they encouraged me to apply, um, and here I am four years later. Well, we are so lucky to have you in our community. And I am even more excited that you are going a little bit of what I would feel like is a non-traditional route and sharing some musical theater numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and that's a tradition in your family to watch musicals before the holiday? Yep, every holiday we always love to watch Anastasia and the Wiz. This is going to be wonderful. Everyone enjoy.
corners and the streets of Petersburg. Just a kid on the fly, getting good at getting by in Petersburg.
Welcome back again. Wasn't that fun? What an incredible voice Stephen has. I'm so glad he shared his holiday tradition with us. I am delighted to be joined with Alexis Morgan, and she is here, and she will be um, sharing with you a little bit about the pieces she's going to be singing. Um, first, Alexis, I understand you recorded some of these videos in your garage. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, um, so I'm with a friend in the videos, Adrienne Vandermullen, and uh, she and I recorded these out in our garage, uh, just knowing that we were getting some really good audio acoustics out there. Um, so it's a very stripped back and relaxed version of some Christmas carols. Um, and that was uh, just a really fun, uh, relaxed way to make some music. Now, tell me a little bit more about Adrienne, how do you know her and how old is she? Yes, actually, Adrienne is um, the little sister of several of my friends. Um, she's actually still in high school. Um, she's super talented, and we've sung together for a couple different weddings, um, and I'm just excited to be singing with her again. That's wonderful. Um, I also understand there is some original music being shared in your video. How did that come to be? Yeah, my friend Julie Dirksy wrote a song called Come Away. Um, and we recorded that with Julie, myself, and my sister, Brianna. Um, so that's a really special, um, it's audio only, and um, just a beautiful recording of, of her original song. That's, thank you so much for sharing. I'm really excited to hear it. And I'm sure all of us are too. Thank you all for tuning in and for all of your support of the Des Moines Choral Society. We could not get through this without you. So without further ado, here's Alexis.
curse is found, for us the curse is found, for us, for us the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the
Hello everyone, wasn't that a refreshing performance from Alexis? Just lovely. We have such talented singers in the Des Moines Choral Society and I'm joined by another here. Uh, Lisa Elbers is here and I understand she is going to be singing some of the favorites from her church. So Lisa, would you just tell us about the pieces you'll be singing? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I am a member of Covenant Presbyterian Church in West Des Moines, and I sing in the choir there. And um, in addition to singing with the Des Moines Choral Society. And so um, when they asked us to do a little singing for um, the Des Moines Choral Society Singathon, I figured that it might be good to just do a few of the pieces that the that uh, the congregation members at Covenant enjoy. So um, we're going to be singing uh, three songs here today. One of them is going to be uh, Oh Holy Night, which I'm going to be doing a duet with my son. Um, he's 21 years old and goes to Wayne State College, and uh, we've been singing together for as long as he's been alive. Um, and then I'm going to be singing Mary Did You Know um, as a solo, and then my son is going to be singing the uh, Christmas rendition of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. And oh. I don't know what order they're going to be doing them in, but uh, those are the three tunes. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. Now, it sounds like music has been a very large part of yours and your son's lives, but what was it that brought you to the Des Moines Choral Society? Well, I've been singing in choirs my whole life, but I wanted to um, get a new uh, 
uh, get into the Des Moines Choral Society, and I did that seven years ago, so it was a lot of fun, and I really enjoy it. I'm missing it now. Oh, well, we are so glad to have this little bit of time to be able to share your gifts with everyone else. So thank you so much, Lisa, and thank you all for tuning in. Save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? The child that you delivered would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby would calm the storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kissed your little baby, then you kissed the face of God. Let 
by the light of faith so greenly beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand so led by light of a star sweetly gleaming here came men from the Orient land, the King of kings thus lay in lowly manger, in all our trials born to be our friend. He knows our need. I've heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy And I just want to sing this song for you It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift With every breath I'm singing Alleluia Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A couple came to Bethlehem, expecting child. They searched the inn to find a place for you were coming soon. 
There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only Son was born, oh, alleluia, 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 alleluia. The shepherds left their flocks by night To see this baby wrapped in light A host of angels led them all to you It was just as the angels said You'll find him in a manger bed Emmanuel and Savior, alleluia Alleluia, Alleluia. A star shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem. The wise men three came many miles in journey long for you. To the place at which you were, their frankincense, their gold and myrrh they gave to you, and cried out, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. came to rescue me, this baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you, that rugged cross was my cross too, and every breath you drew was Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Good afternoon. I'm Jane Ryder, and I am delighted to introduce to you the Steenson family, who are a little like the. Exactly, there aren't quite as many children in in this particular family, but they have the most wonderful musical story to tell. And so I'm going to turn it over to Natalie the mom, and also Elena and Anna are with us at this time. And Natalie, can you just tell us a little bit about your experience with um, music and how you got to the Choral Society? Sure, we'd love to share. <laughs> so um, we're here without Dave today, but um, he couldn't be with us. But um, myself, I'm Natalie, and... I'm Elena, and I'm Anna. Yes. So we um, kind of are like the Von Trapp family. We um, have always enjoyed singing and always having music in our home. I have a BA in music from Coe College. Um, Dave has a music degree. He was a music educator, if you can believe that. He um, never really fully um, decided to do music education, but um, his degree is um, from Augustana College in Rock Island. And then the girls later in life. Um, we both have music degrees as well. I'm a viola performance major from Drake University. And, and I'm a BA in music with an emphasis on cello. So all along, we've just enjoyed um, putting together some combinations of 
instruments. Anna has um, always found strings to be, and Elena as well, but Anna even more so. She picks up a guitar, she picks up a ukulele, she picks up a mandolin. Um, and we've always said strings are their thing. Um, but still vocal music has always been important. Um, both Dave and I sang in choirs, much like everybody that's been talking today. Um, we've just grown up with it. Well, we learned early on about Des Moines um, Choral Society, but we also found out about Iowa Youth Chorus. And so, golly, girls, when was it that you guys started with Iowa Youth Chorus? Mm, second grade? Yeah, it's been a been long time. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, well, a long time ago, but how long did you guys sing with Iowa Youth Corps. Oh, probably for 10 years or so. Yeah. yeah. Under the direction of Kristen Stanton. And they got to do choir tours as well. And we were visiting with Jane earlier that Jane was um, a part of helping make their dreams come true for a great choir tour that you guys took to Italy, right? Mm -hmm. And so early on, they started performing together some of their instruments and singing and I'd help out a time or two and Dave of course would too and they started um, trying to raise money for their choir tours and so now they have a collaboration called Clear Joy Music. We do weddings, everything, yeah gigs, house concerts, we play for a lot of churches as well. And we have kind of a side love and that's Celtic music and so they've picked up a lot of Celtic instruments and play whistle and all that as well. So yes, choir and singing has been a huge part of our, our lives. We, we can't even imagine what life would be like without it. <laughs> How did you get uh, drawn to the Des Moines Choral Society, Natalie and Elaine, Elena? Yeah, well, um, Vivian Mogensen, um, introduced us to, um, to it and, and um, Joelle Florin, and they said, oh, you would just love this. And so, um, you know, sure enough, we started listening in and we thought, oh, if we could um, audition and get a chance to sing with this choir, what a fantastic experience. And of course, Dave and I um, joined about five years ago, and then Elena, this would be her third year. And um, how did you find out about the Choral Society? You said from some friends, but what did you think of the audition process? Well, <laughs> you know, everyone always kind of makes that seem a little bit intimidating, but Dr. Rohde made it really quite, quite um, enjoyable. Um, I mean, you come prepared with a, a song and then he does some warm ups with you, kind of assesses your um, how high you can sing, how low you can sing, some of rhythm patterns and different things. And so it really wasn't as as horrible as <laughs> some people might, have, <laughs> might make it seem. So, yeah. So, ladies, what do you do? What's your day job? What do you do when you're not singing? So I don't officially have a day job yet. Um, I'm still in school. I'm in law school right now. I'm in my last year. Um, I do teach music lessons though. I have a couple ukulele students, a couple piano students, and I also teach violin and viola. Um, so I do have a handful of students that I teach on the side while I'm going to law school to just make sure I have my set life immersed with music. I do think that um, that is your day job, by the way, Elena. <laughs> I, I can't oh, imagine all of the things that you do and still juggle all of that. And Anna, tell us about um, what your day job is or what you do when you're not singing and making music and playing stringed instruments and all of that stuff. So I work as a video editor and an animator for Studio Iowa. We're just very small, small business, but do a lot of video production for local clients, but also regional clients. So I spend most of my days editing together TV shows, commercials, uh, documentaries, um, or animating um, videos for app launches or software development. So it really, um, every day is a little different, which I really like because you never know what kind of project you're going to be working on. Um, but I always try to find some way to put music into what I'm doing, whether it's like designing a soundtrack to go with it or 
um, being really intentional on how I'm editing to the music, you know, because I can't really separate that from my day job either. <laughs> so. so did you add a little bit of something, Anna, to the performance that you all are going to be presenting? Yeah, so we all played together as a family. So you'll see all four of us um, in the video, but I had all the video equipment set up and ready to go in the audio equipment. But basically, sometimes I'm playing cello, sometimes Elena's singing or, you know, whatever. So we had to kind of pass around the camera equipment. So sometimes <laughs> my dad's filming, sometimes my mom's filming, sometimes I'm filming. But I mean, I edited the whole thing too, but it was a very much a joint family effort to get the production um, how we wanted. So that was a lot of fun. I'm going to ask a kind of general question, and that is why music? What does music mean for you? What does it do for you? Um, what is its importance in your life? Um, I'll let your mom go first so you have a little bit of time to think about it. <laughs> oh boy, but, but what a great question. I mean, music is such a, um, I don't know, I can't separate it spiritually. I mean, it's such a spiritual part. Um, I'm a church musician and my degree is in music and religion. And so I do have the privilege of working at a church as a church musician and music. Oh my goodness. It's such a, um, I, it, it's so deep and it's so um, centering and it's such a gift um, to have and yet turn it around and give it back what a joy it is. And so I find such joy, such solace, such peace and comfort in singing. It just, mm, I don't know, girls, what do you think? <laughs> well, I was going to say that we didn't mention, but mom is an early childhood music educator. So she spends most of her days uh, singing songs for preschool, kindergarten students, and then also doing after school programs and teaching a bunch of lessons um, for piano but, and ukulele too, uh, but I always joke around saying that, well, mom was always teaching these early childhood music classes, like even when she was pregnant with me. So there's never been a time in my life where I've not been in a music class or been a part of music. So like, it wouldn't make sense for me not to have that. Like that, that's the only way I can really explain is that it, it's probably my first real um, experience of emotions, you know, like that kind of like being able to have an outlet for that. Um, yeah, I, I think that's as natural as it comes. <laughs> yeah. And Thank you, of, Anna. Yeah, and just kind of saying, like, going off of what both my mom and my sister have been saying, it's just, it's something about the way that music interacts with other people <laughs> that is just so um, unique. Like, there's no other thing on earth that quite has that connection, if, uh, whether or not it's you're communicating with the audience or you're communicating with people you're performing with. Um, or even communicating with who wrote the music and having trying to interpret or figure out um, what emotions, what they were thinking when they were composing it or creating this work um, of music. And so having that kind of um, relationship with um, the people um, throughout history and in, in the current moment and in the future who are going to appreciate or enjoy the music that we've been making is just this really cool gift um, and a blessing for me to be able to be a part of that. Um, you're talking about how music is relational. Yes. Yeah. And all of you have sung in choirs um, through, gosh, childhood, church choirs, high school, college, you name it. Um, what's, what's that like to have a choir member sitting next to you and making music with you? Well, what a treat it is to sing with Des Moines Choral Society. I mean, the excellence and the dedication of everybody who comes through those doors every Sunday night and their commitment to working hard and just making the most beautiful music together. I tell you, I get choked up during choir rehearsals <laughs> as well as the performances, but being shoulder to shoulder with people who have that same passion, whoa, there's nothing quite like it. And clearly in your family, it's a relational experience. Hmm. I mean, all of you know the joys and sorrows, the ups and downs, the goods and bads um, of each other, but you can really use music to work out whatever it is that, whatever challenge comes ahead of you 
and whatever ends up landing in your lap. And I think that is an amazing, amazing experience and joy. Mm-hmm. Well, so, you know, they say, Jane, they say that a, a family that prays together stays together. Well, right. I don't know. I, I do believe that, but I also think that a family that sings and plays music together is bound to stay together too. So we really do have fun together. Um, Natalie, could you give us just a little, a short take on how you and Dave met? Oh, this is a fun story and I'll make That's it a quick. Break. <laughs> okay. So um, years ago, obviously, it's been almost, it's 29 um, in a few days, actually, December 7th is our anniversary. Well, Dave was interested in me and I didn't know that, but I was um, visiting my family back in Sumner, Iowa. And he called me up on the telephone and said, hey, Natalie, I need someone to help me sing for an evening service that next Sunday, that next day. And I said, well, how are we going to do that? He says, I have an idea. So he called back a second later, plugged his phone in by the piano, and we rehearsed a song together that very moment. And we sang that next day. Well, you know that we had been trained quite similarly. We just naturally were able to sing quite well together. So it's a really fun story. And it's a beginning that um, we've continued on and still sing together. So what I like about that story, Natalie, is that your boyfriend was with you at your home. And um, Dave didn't really know that. And um, luckily for everyone, that relationship decided not to um, thrive. And, <laughs> and you and Dave kind of um, got through all of that lovely kind of courting things. I bet you sang to each other. Yes, yes. Yep, it was meant to be. I think that's marvelous. Um, Elena, what brought you to the Des Moines Choral Society? Um, my parents decided that I should join. No, it was, <laughs> it was good. I like, went to the concerts and I really enjoyed it and I knew that it was a good time for me to join and sing some more. Did you, um, Natalie, did you and Dave have uh, music in your background growing up? My mom was um, a singer and a piano player, um, but Dave, um, not so much, but I mean, his parents very, very involved in music and love music. So they supported it 100%. And I think I see them in the front row of every concert and with gigantic grins on their face as they watch you all do something that you so clearly love. So. Uh, what other strange and interesting thoughts would you like to offer us? Well, we're just excited to share with you um, what will be the next 40 minutes. Um, so um, be prepared. Hang in there because there's some really fun stuff toward the end. OK. OK. Yes. Thank you so much. Enjoy, please.
Oh. 
those that once split night from day now feebly clutch a blade of hay. This is Emmanuel, majestic King, now small and weak. The Word of God must learn to speak. This is Emmanuel. This is our God, seen by our eyes. The love of the Father made known in Jesus Christ. This is our God.
Hello and welcome back to the Choral Society's Singathon. I'm Elise Morris, the host for this hour. I'm one of our board members. Uh, we're here at the top of hour nine, if you can believe it, and we're so happy to have you with us. Uh, starting off this hour, we have one of our singers, Sue Breenheld. Sue, why don't you tell us what you're going to be performing for us today? Sure. Thanks, Elise. Um, well, for starters, I'm going to be joined by my daughter, Megan, who's coming to us from Hawaii. So if you look carefully in the video, you should see Diamond Head out there in the windows. And as well, a, a friend of hers who's going to, Jeff Ahoy, who's playing. And I'm doing a, a collection of just classic Christmas songs, White Christmas, um, Chestnuts, Roasting on an Open Fire, of course. Uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which seemed particularly poignant this year with the pandemic. And... Uh, a cheerier version of Jingle Bells. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, wonderful. I, so I hope beautiful. You enjoy it. Yeah, so beautiful music and beautiful views, it sounds like, all the way from Hawaii. That's great. So, Sue, before we have you singing, why don't you, uh, can you tell us how long you've been with the Choral Society? Um, I, I joined in 1982, and I haven't counted up the years lately. <laughs> but it, I think at this point, I may have the longest tenure in the group. Oh, that's they wonderful. They keep letting me come back, which is wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Well, thanks so much for sharing your talents with us and your daughter and her friend, too. And we are just about ready to head to your performance. So thanks okay. again to everyone who's tuning in. And I hope you enjoy Sue and her daughter and her daughter's friend's performances here. Thanks, Elise. Thank you. 
Welcome back to the Des Moines Choral Society's Singathon. We're here in hour nine of our event, and I just wanted to give a brief update. We are already over fourteen thousand dollars raised, which is just astounding. Um, that's after we've moved our fundraising goal up to fifteen thousand, so we are getting so close to our super stretch goal. Um, and next up, singing, uh, joining us, we've got Dave Short. So, Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you'll be performing and how you got involved with the Choral Society? Sure, thanks Elise. I got involved with the Choral Society in 1989 after I'd been out of uh, singing. I hadn't been singing in groups for about 14 years and I was uh, feeling like I was really missing out on a, on a, a, a great uh, event of singing and, and I just needed to do that. Um, and my spouse, Levon, uh, was really supportive of me to uh, get me involved with the Choral Society. I joined in 1989. I've been with the group for uh, 31 years now. Wow, that's wonderful. And if yeah. you want to tell us really quickly what you'll be performing here. Yeah, and so this will be uh, over the next half hour. We've got a party of four uh, that will be singing. We've got um, Mike Ring and myself who are currently uh, members of the Choral Society, and then we also have Joel Geddes and Mark Kallenbach, tenor extraordinaire. Uh, we've been singing together for the past 10 years, and we're going to be singing a number of uh, favorites um, and some things that maybe you haven't heard for a while. So sit back and relax, enjoy our take on some, uh, on some old holiday favorites. So enjoy. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel, Mr. Grinch. Mr. Grinch, Mr. Grinch, you're a monster, Mr. Grinch, your heart's an empty hole, your brain is full of spiders, you've got garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch, I wouldn't touch you with a Thirty-nine and a half foot pole. Well, you're a bow one, Mr. Grinch. You have termites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I'd take the seasick crocodile. Crocodile, you're a foul one, Mr. Grinch. You're a nasty, wasty skunk and a punk. Your heart is full of unwashed socks. Your soul is full of gunk, Mr. Grinch. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote. Stink, stink, stank, stank, stunk, stunk. Well, you're a rotter, Mr. Grinch. You're the king of a sinful socks. Your heart's a dead tomato splotch with moldy purple spots, Mr. Grinch. Your soul is an appalling dump heap overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of deplorable rubbish imaginable, mangled up in tangled up knots. <laughs> Mr. Grinch, you nauseate me, Mr. Grinch, with a nauseous super nos. You're a crooked jerky jockey, and you drive a crooked hoss. Mr. Grinch, you're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with us and egg sauce. Mr. 
Mr. Grinch, Mr. Grinch, Mr. Grinch, you're a mean one, such a mean one. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. See me coming in a big Rum, 
I played my drum for him. I played my best for him. Christmas, Christmas bells ring out, ring love's a treasure. So we sing so this we song sing. in merry measure, spreading the word, let it be heard. Each bell a part of loving hearts. Dong, hear the bells, bright silver bells. Now a ring, good news they bring. Be of good cheer, Christmas is here. Now all is well seen, we know well. Loudly they ring, each answer ring, filling the air. Loudly declare, this is the year, peace will appear. Hatred will cease, love will increase. Song so sincere, message so clear, hearts drawing near, no need to fear. Love is agreeing, love is revealing, love is our being, we all are one. Christmas bells ring out and love's a treasure, so we sing this song with merry measure. Spreading the word, let it be heard, each bell a part of loving hearts. Dark you the bells, bright silver bells, now echoing, good news they ring. Ding dong. Ding dong. The sun is shining, the grass is green, the orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a December the 24th
Hi, and welcome back to the Des Moines Choral Society Singathon. I'm Elise Morris, the host for this hour, and I'm one of our board members. Joining me now, we have our next performer, or actually, he's continuing on in this um, lovely group of performers, party of four. We've got Mike Ring. So Mike is one of uh, a member of the Choral Society. And so Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about your time and your experience with the Choral Society? Well, thank you, Elise. Uh, I've been with the Choral Society twice, I was with them once back in the uh, late 1980s. And then again, I think since 2002, which is I think the same time Dr. Rohde came. So about 18, total, total of about 25 years. Just enjoyed every, every uh, minute of it. I've heard so many comments about the, on this live stream so far about comments that people made and just how, uh, how, how quickly uh, the time goes by during rehearsals. So. But thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like for a lot of people, performance and re uh, the rehearsals is kind of their weekly self-care routine. So that's been really, really wonderful to hear everybody share about that. So we have a little bit of time left before your next segment. Can you tell us a little bit about Party of Four? The Party of Four is a, a quartet of four, four guys who uh, sing a cappella, and we sing at farmer's markets and we sing, sing at the state fair, uh, sing a lot of... Um, uh, music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. We do Shut Up and Dance, which is one of my favorite ones. Um, just music of all, all flavors. So um, we just enjoy that too. So Yeah, that's wonderful. So I imagine Shut Up and Dance isn't going to be in this next segment here, but please enjoy the, the next little bit of Christmas music here from Party of Four. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. See the blazing you'll be for us, fa la 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus, fa la 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 la. Follow, follow me, follow me, follow, follow me, la 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 la. While I tell of your tight treasures, fa la 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 la. Fast away the old year passes. Fa la 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 la. Hail the new year, lads and lasses. Fa la 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 la. Sing we joyous all together. Fa la 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 la. Heedless of the wind and weather. Fa la 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 la. They know that sad 
Santa's on his, on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child, child is on a spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. Said the night wind to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. With a tail as big as a kite, bum 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 bum, bum 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 bum. Set the little lamb to the shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? Ringing in the sky, shepherd boy. Do you hear what I? A song, a song, high above the trees, with a voice as big as the sea. With a voice as big as the sea, said the shepherd boy to the mighty king. Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? In your palace war, mighty king. A child, a child, a shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Pray, Pray for peace, people everywhere. everywhere. Listen to what I say. A child, a child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring, he will bring us goodness. and light, goodness and light, goodness and light.
City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in dressed red in style, in the air there's a feeling of Christmas, of Christmas, children laughing, people passing, meeting, meeting smile after smile, smile after and on smile. every street corner you hear silver bells. Christmas time in the city. Hear the bells go ring a ling, ring a ling. Hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas day. Strings of street lights, even stop lights, blink a bright red and as the shoppers rush home with the treasures, the treasures. Hear the snow crunch. See the kids bunch. This is Santa's this big is Santa's big And above seat. all this bustle, you hear, you hear silver bells, silver bells.
Hi, and welcome back to the Des Moines Choral Society's Singathon. We're nearing the end of hour nine here. Uh, I'm Elise Morris, the host for this hour, one of our board members, and I'm joined uh, in our next segment not by one of our singers, but by our office administrator, LaVon. So, LaVon, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing in your video? Thanks, Elise. Um, for the last 30 years, I have been attending Choral Society concerts, and I have been um, lucky to have been serving as the office administrator for the past year, um, a position that's really been more of a pleasure than a job. Since I don't sing with the Choral Society, I chose to sing two Chris or sing two read two <laughs> Christmas classics to my five grandchildren, who for the most part were very well behaved. The first story is about a snowman who wants to sing and about a little girl in the park who helps him reach his goal. And the second story, of course, is the Christmas classic, The Night Before Christmas, which I think we can all probably recite by heart. So I hope everyone enjoys the stories. Wonderful. And you said five grandkids. How old are they? They are 11, 8, 5, 4, and 4. And then we have one more on the way. Oh, goodness. I think we were talking right before this that it's it's mostly girls, but you've got one boy in the middle there, right? That's right. And the oldest so far sings, and um, she is a decent soprano, so we'll see what happens with her as she gets a little older. She likes to listen to Papa sing. In fact, she came to the last December choral concert with me, so Aww. she enjoyed it. Wonderful. Well, right. I hope um, that your grandkids enjoyed the story, and I hope we have some other kids maybe watching who might enjoy your, I, your reading here, I, too. Thank you very much. The snowman's song. So let's see what this story is all about. Okay? I want to sing. The little snowman sent his thought to his mother. I want to go a caroling, like a happy child with a silvery voice. It's Christmas time. I want to rejoice. Snow people can't sing, his mother thought sadly. We're made of snow. It makes no sound. A child of snow doesn't have a voice. I'm sorry, my son. You don't have a choice. See the snowman? But her little son snowman had so many strong wishes. He wanted to share that he made a windstorm of whirling thought through the air. I want my voice to be like church bells or like harps that angels play in the clouds. I want my voice to be bright, happy, and loud so all the people and creatures of earth will hear my proud hymn of our Savior's birth. Isn't he cute? A tiny bright bird with a darting quick pace wrapped her feet on his arm and sang near his face. Her thoughts formed soft snow notes so clear and so sweet he almost felt he had ears to hear. Why can't I sing like you, thought the little snowman. Of course you can. She sent this thought back to him as she touched his snow head with the tip of her wing. But first you really need to believe that no matter what anyone thinks back to you, it just isn't true that a snowman can't sing. See? How can I do that? Everyone tells me I don't have a choice. I'll never make music or have my own voice. I'm not sure how you do it, she sent back warm thoughts. I just know before you can, you are I just know before you can change who you are, you have to believe. Feel it deep in your heart. Think strong thoughts in your mind. Even when there's no hope, you must see a star. There's the bird talking to the snowman. So the sad little snowman put on a brave face. He worked hard to replace his doubts and his fears with thoughts of sweet songs, music, bells ringing, and choirs. Deep in his heart like a candlelit fire, his bright wish remained his one heart's desire. The sun always cheered him. At dawn, he felt strong. He tried to have hope that his voice would soon flower. Would this be the day? Would this be the hour? But his spirit grew weak as the day became long. Each day was a chance to make a new start. But by night, he cried ice and felt sad in his heart. Mm. Sometimes he looked up for signs in the sky, but nothing was happening. He couldn't make sounds. Despite all his wishing, no one seemed aware that deep in the park, in the snow. He was there. He's all by himself. Sad snowman. Well, one day he woke up and something was new. The morning was crisp. The sky was bright blue. He felt powdery footsteps. Mommy, look what I found. A small girl stood near him. Then she jumped up and down. Her eyes were so happy. Her thoughts like bright light. 
Her warm voice was filled with pure Christmas delight. He's such a kid snowman. Could I stay and play a while? Of course you can, dear. I'll be right here. Just have a good time. For most of the day, she played beside him. She straightened his hat and turned up its brim. She draped her winter scarf around his middle. She sang him three songs and she told him a riddle. Then she dangled her glass beads and charms all over his nose and both of his arms. Do you think he can hear me? She asked her mother. Are you crazy? Sneered her big brother. He rolled his eyes. Who told you those lies? Snowmen can't hear anything that you say. Let's go home, said her mother. We'll come back another day. Oh man. But the little girl didn't want to go home. Her once joyful thoughts took a more somber tone. She ran up to the sight of his sad snowy face and whispered these words, which felt like an embrace. I know you can hear me. I really believe it. I think you are special. I'll never forget the day that we spent. I hear your warm music, even though you can't speak. And then she leaned over and kissed his cold cheek. She kissed the snowman. Wasn't that nice? Yeah, I kind of think. Kiss snow? Mm -hmm. She kissed the snow. That's weird. He wanted so much to sing just one small note, but nothing would come from his cold heart, snow throat. If only she knew he could hear in his head the sweet gentle grace of the words she had said. But something was happening he just didn't know. For where she had kissed him, he started to glow. And little by little, the snow melted spaces, leaving tiny pearl strings of small open places from the side of his face to the base of his throat, like the holes in a flute that play very high notes. The night before Christmas was the worst night of all. All around there was music. Everyone seemed so glad. He silently stood in his place in the park. His feelings were frozen. His thoughts were so dark. His mother was worried. She felt his despair, and she tried to send comfort to him through the air. Maisie, can you see? He knew that she cared, but his cold, heavy silence was too sad to be shared. The loss of his dreams were too much to shoulder, and they wouldn't come back even if he had told her. He bowed his head and he shut his eyes tight. Snow was starting to fall, it was such a cold night. With the last ounce of courage that only faith brings, his thoughts formed this prayer with frost-covered wings. See the mom and the little boy snowman? He's kind of sad. Please let me sing a song filled with light, then my life will be perfect, my thoughts will be right. And all the sweet sounds angels use to stop doubt will burst forth from my heart and out of my mouth like a powdery snow over this holy night. He almost missed her soft steps in the snow. She was holding a candle that gave a warm glow. It was a small girl. She had brought him a gift. She sensed all his tears. His soul needed a lift. Round his neck there was tinkling like spoons hitting glass. She had made him a necklace in her second grade class, silver bells, gold stars, and snowflakes of blue. It was beautifully fashioned and it made music too. This gesture of kindness made his heart feel so light. His spirit was lifted. He forgot all his sorrow. No more thoughts of tomorrow, no more thoughts of the past. He just loved this one moment. He wanted to freeze it so it would last. All right. The winter wind came with a huge forceful blast the tinkling bell necklace swirled round very fast, and all of a sudden the holes near his face blew out lyrical sounds like a heavenly flute. The whole world stood in place. His dream was fulfilled. There was He was no longer mute. His songs was like spring rains and violin springs, the fragrance of flowers and hummingbird wings, words of great kindness, the faith in our hymns, the shine in our eyes and the little girl's whims, more joyful than angels, more peaceful than sleep filled with longing and prayers and memories to keep. There's the necklace. All the love in his mind, all the light in his soul, his dreams for the future, his hopes to be whole, were the notes of his music, his own unique psalm. Her soft giving spirit had made his thoughts calm. She knew he had heard her. It was golden and true. The wonder of Christmas surrounded them, these two. See the little girl in the snowman, Caleb? I can't see the little girl. See? All right. Great. For this sweet frozen moment, this small speck of time, 
In heaven and earth, everything was sublime. And here's the little girl and the snowman. And he's so happy because he finally got to sing. Wasn't that a good story? Mm -hmm. Yep, because yep. we all like to sing, don't we? Yep. Okay, so we're going to read one more book, okay? Everybody with me? Yay. Yes. The Night Before Christmas. Who's heard this before? I haven't, but my sister has. Okay. Before. Here we go. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse, or a cat, or a dog, or a, a guinea pig. The stockings were hung on the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their bed, with visions of sugar plums dancing in their heads. Who, who has visions of sugar plums? I don't know. With Mama and her kerchief and I and my cap, we had just settled down for a long winter's nap. They were going to sleep all winter like a bear. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash. I tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. Can you imagine? The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to the objects below. It's pretty, isn't it? It's a snowman. It was. When what to my wondering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Eight reindeer. Not honey, one. Eight. Hi, right, honey. Okay, just a minute. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Do we know what the names are? Okay, I'll tell you. Now, Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Look at those deer, they're big. Mm -hmm. And pretty. And pretty. Yeah. As leaves it before the wild hurricane fly. I didn't see the reindeer. Hey, I wanted that chocolate chip cotton. Leah, could you hand Lorraine a cookie? As leaves it before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, hey, the coursers they flew. Well, with I, the sleigh full of toys. And St. Nicholas, too. I ate the rest one. Okay, we're going to listen, okay? And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof, because the reindeer were on the roof. Yep, they're on the roof. As I drew, drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. Santa. That's Santa Claus! Santa. Santa! A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples so merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry, his little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. We don't have any snow yet, do we? The stump of a pipe he held tight in his mouth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon let me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and he filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk and laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. That was pretty much a trick, wasn't it? He sprang to the sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as they drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's turn around and look at the camera. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Christmas, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.
Hello, and welcome back to the Des Moines Choral Society's Singathon event. We're here at the start of another wonderful hour of music making. I just want to give everybody an update for our fundraiser. We're now at $14,335, and that is very, very close to our super stretch goal, which we had set of $15,000 after we had been so wowed by everyone's contribution. So we are so thankful for everything that uh, you've all donated and for everyone tuning in with us today. To start off this hour, we have a recorded interview between our composer in residence, Elaine Hagenberg and Dr. Rohde, and they're going to talk about what it means to be a composer in residence, how she writes her compositions, how she's getting um, uh, inspiration during this time. And we are just so fortunate to have truly a world-class composer among our singers. So please enjoy this interview between Elaine Hagenberg and Dr. Rohde. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Jim Rohde, uh, Artistic Director of the Des Moines Choral Society. And I'm really pleased that right now we can have with us uh, Elaine Hagenberg. And uh, well, Elaine, it's uh, been so great to have your association with us with the, um, with the Des Moines Choral Society. I remember when we first met, it was when you uh, I was auditioning um, uh, some high school students for the ISU Honor Choir, and you came in and accompanied someone. And that's the first time that I saw you. So uh, since then, we've had a great chance to to work together with the Des Moines Choral Society, and uh, <clears throat> it's been just a beautiful collaboration. Not only not only me, but the uh, rest of the singers just enjoy your music so much. Hi, Elaine. Well, thank you. Thanks for the invitation to to be here with, for this interview. And um, I'm excited to talk a little bit about how much the Choral Society has meant to me personally getting to sing with my friends, but also professionally and how it's really been a wonderful place where I've been able to learn and grow as a composer. And my first memory actually of meeting you, Jim, was by telephone. I don't know if you remember this, but I was not a singer yet with the Des Moines Choral Society. And back in the olden days when we used to just call people on the telephone, I got a phone call one evening. My name is Jim Rohde and I'm the artistic director. And one of your friends gave me your name and thought maybe you should come sing with us. Do you remember calling members? Oh uh, boy, oh boy. I don't remember that one, I'm sorry. Yeah, this was maybe 13, 14 years ago. <clears throat> so sure enough, I went to your Christmas concert because I wanted to hear what the Choral Society sounded like. And wow, what an amazing group. And I thought, I need to sing with these singers. And um, and then ever since I've been part, every Sunday night, I love looking forward to, as I said, singing with friends, getting to sing amazing repertoire from you know Bach and Mendelssohn. And um, as a composer, I'm always learning and I'm always growing by the score study that we have, of course, in rehearsal. But then it's just also fun. It just lets me be a singer rather than, you know, at the time I was also a teacher or a composer, like I said, some of those other hats that I wear. But it's fun to just come and get to be a soprano again. Um, so that was my first memory of meeting you. And, and then as a composer, um, you were really the first one who really believed in me, which that sounds a little cliche to say, but you were one of the first people to start programming my music around the country. And I remember bringing you a piece. Do you remember which one? Well, the first one I remember, uh, it really had an impact. I mean, we, we didn't really didn't know what to expect and you brought a piece in and it was I thought it was really pretty. I listened to it and boy, the, the phrasing and everything just started to happen so lovely. It was called A Child of Peace. Right. And, um, um, and what I've said to people along the way when, with your music is that if, if um, uh, you want your singers to learn how to sing a musical phrase, sing the music of Elaine Hagenberg because it just, it just automatically pulls and pulls you through I think I think you've got a real skill in that in that er, er, area. But I remember that piece. Yeah, the child of peace. Yeah. And that was it was only the second piece I had written. But um, because of the Des Moines Choral Society and the beautiful recording that I got from that Christmas concert, then I submitted that piece to a publisher. And that was my very first published choral piece, all thanks to you and the Choral Society. So um, and then, of course, after that, I think 
um, almost every Christmas, you would ask me, do you have another piece to start thinking about? And I wrote down some statistics because I couldn't remember. I had to look it up. Okay. So the Des Moines Choral Society has, um, over the last 10 years, has performed 13 of my pieces. And 11 of those were Christmas pieces because of course we have this beautiful Christmas concert that we always love to have. So it's really sparked some ideas and inspired some Christmas music for me to be working on. And eight of those pieces, I think this is a huge deal. Eight of those pieces were world premieres, meaning the first time that they had ever been performed. And I think, you know, I have several friends around the country that are conductors that they might do one premiere or might do one piece, but to have a choir and a conductor do 13 performances and eight of them are world premieres mm -hmm. is pretty exciting. And it, um, again, I just have, I'm so grateful for this partnership and the friendships and how much I've learned. Um, I, I talk to students all around the country, um, uh, some of them asking questions, how can I get better as a composer? And the number one thing I tell them is listen to live choirs. And I think that is how I've grown because it's one thing to imagine a sound in your mind or to sit at the piano and play it, but you need to hear an actual tenor sing a line and you need to hear the actual um, texture and the balance. You need to hear the actual vowels that they're going to be singing. And I feel like that is how you really learn and grow. And that is something that the Choral Society has been so um, so kind and so generous to me and giving me these opportunities because every week I get to learn, I get to improve. And another fun thing for me too is um, in these Christmas pieces that we've been talking about and in the session after this, you'll get to hear a few of the Christmas pieces that I have uh, written for the Des Moines Choral Society. But one thing that I've also learned in addition to writing for voices is how to write for strings and chamber orchestra. And um, it's been really fun for me to learn to write for oboes and flutes and um, also add some percussion. And so every Christmas when I get to write for chamber orchestra, I feel like I get little violin lessons and cello lessons and oboe lessons. And then I sit down and I talk to all the instrumentalists and I say, do you have any edits for me? And I, I continue, I feel like every year I get better at this. So Elaine, you were just mentioning about chatting with students and um, during this time of COVID, um, you probably been doing some virtual things around the country, maybe even around the world. Have you had a chance to do uh, connect with people in various places? Yes. Oh, absolutely. So um, obviously I'm not traveling right now, but I've been uh, meeting with choirs all over the country and even the world. So even just last week or the week before I was talking to the National Youth Choir in Ireland and um, just some wonderful students there, but really students all over the country. Um, and not just students, I've been presenting for a different ACDA, American Choral Directors Association, where I get to just meet other conductors and share some ideas and vision uh, with choral music. And um, I'm grateful for technology, of course, during this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, well, you're becoming uh, you know, world, worldwide known now, so that's, that's so exciting for me. When I think back to when we first met, to see where where, where you've grown now as a as just a, a one of our beloved beloved composers, uh, we were working on a piece of yours just before we had to shut everything down in March, and it was it was a piece called Alleluia, which I think is going to be a very popular piece for you, and um, uh, we am sorry we had to close the books on it for us. I hope we can pick it up later when we get get back together. Um, but would you share with us how you how you came up with that melody, that Alleluia melody? It might just give an idea. I know we chatted about it once before, yeah. but it might give our listeners an idea of um, how you approach a piece of music and how something moves you and you you actually get to the final product. Sure. Yeah, funny. I actually even have that piece sitting right here because I was just talking to someone else about it. So the piece that Jim is talking about here is called Alleluia, and uh, it is a beautiful St. Augustine text. It's a just a short little text. It's only five lines, but in the first line of music, it says, all shall be amen and alleluia. And 
So much of my music, especially my earlier writing, is what I would call slow and pretty, very legato and lyric and rubato. And I really wanted to write something contrasting. And so I found this text and I thought, what about a really joyful, upbeat, alleluia? I could even try 5 8 or 7 8. And what I did then is I took my notebook, just like the one here. And one evening I went to the Rose Gardens in Des Moines. It was a beautiful August evening and the sun was just setting. It was dusk and I just took my notebook and I started singing to myself all the different ways I could sing the word Alleluia. And I'm sketching out different lines and different shapes and different ways that I can present this theme. And I had probably a whole page and a half of ideas and some of them were terrible, but some of them I could maybe keep and use. Um, and then that started as the A section to my Alleluia. So it's this buoyant, joyful 7A Alleluia. And then the B section is this slow, beautiful, expansive 4 4, and where we get to really explore the text of St. Augustine. And then it returns to that A section again. So it's uplifting and joyful, a couple surprise key changes, takes us clear to the end. But um, my process always starts with the text. So like I said, first I have this text. And for me, I just go ahead and I start speaking the words to that text. Um, and then that oftentimes will dictate what the rhythm should be. It'll tell me, is this a long held note or is this a short little eighth note uh, pattern? Is it three, four, is it seven, eight, is it four, four? Um, all of that I can determine just by speaking that text over and over. And then I start singing, getting different melodies. So, so much of my music is melody driven where some composers might think about harmonies first and different chords. I always think of melody and that's just my personal preference. So I start thinking about different shapes that I can create with my voice. And, and then I think secondary under that is how can I find harmonies that are going to speak like that? And of course, throughout the whole time I'm thinking about form. So I told you in that piece it was ABA, but sometimes the pieces are strophic, sometimes they're through composed. Um, but I start to put all of these elements together. I start thinking about accompaniments, what kind of piano parts can be compelling yet supportive, maybe some string parts. I always love writing string parts, especially with uh, my Christmas pieces. It's extra special to have around the holidays. Um, and then um, I, I told you how I like to start with pencil and paper. I'm a little old fashioned like that, but then I then go to my computer, which you can see I have here a keyboard and I have notation software and I um, can kind of play with one hand the notes and then I type with the other hand with the note duration. And then I can, of course, go in with my mouse and kind of make some edits. I can add crescendos, I can add slurs, all of those sorts of uh, dynamics and extra things. And then the piece goes to the commissioner. So if the piece is for the Des Moines Choral Society, um, you all will get the first printed off the press copies. And then of course, in the rehearsal process, sometimes other things will come up and Dr. Brody will say, how about we move this crescendo back one measure? What would you think? And I said, I love it, let's add it. And some soprano will say, you know, have a suggestion or a question about a breath mark. And I always find that singers are the best editors. So all my friends in the choral society, um, whenever they ask me questions, I think, oh, that's a great, or there'll be a typo in the text, right? So we'll make all of those changes and those edits. And um, then I'll have, I'll go back after the premiere, make some more edits, tidy it up, and then it goes to a publisher after that. And that's when you get the printed pretty octavos with the covers and the music inside, and they go off to distributors where then they can be sold uh, all around the world. That's great. That's so much fun to hear uh, about how you um, how, how that process work, works for, for you and your skills at the keyboard. You know, I've seen that. So I'm sure that plays a part in your, uh, you know, uh, hearing some harmonies and and being able to work some things out that that way, that way as well. Well, anyway, Elaine, thank you very much. Uh, this has been great. Um, and uh, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed enjoyed working uh, with with you as a musician and friend and um, and also how much the Des Moines Choral Society and our audiences have enjoyed your music. Keep writing. It's it's always fresh and beautiful. So well, thank you. So much. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your leadership with Des Moines Choral Society and especially thank you to all my friends who sing this music. Um, it is an honor to get to write for you and I'm so blessed every time we get to sing together. So Merry thank Christmas, you. everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Elaine. Oh.
Good evening, and thank you for joining the Des Moines Choral Society's Thing-a-thon. I'm Aaron Coleman. I'm hosting for us for the moment. Next up is Mackenzie Stern. And Mackenzie, tell us a little bit about what you'll be singing and how long you've been involved with the Choral Society. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I'm Mackenzie. I've been singing soprano with the Des Moines Choral Society for the last uh, four seasons or so. Uh, and I want to echo previous singers and just give everyone involved um, a huge thank you for creating this project and helping it run so smoothly. It's been such a joy this Saturday. Um, and my contribution today will be three pieces. The first is I Wonder As I Wander by John Jacob Niles, which I have to note the setting is in the newly built tunnel between Gray's Lake and Des Moines Waters, Waterworks Park. Um, a couple of my voice students let me know that it was finished and that it had great acoustics. So of course we had to check it out. Um, and then the second one is Yezu Bambino, which connects me back to my tradition at home when I've sung it in Christmas Eve services, um, featuring my husband Elliot on the keys. And then the third is our take on the Carpenter's Merry Christmas Darling as a duet. Thank you, Mackenzie. I know we're looking forward to hearing your contributions here momentarily. And just a quick reminder to everyone, if you haven't contributed, you can contribute using the link below us on the video in the description of the video there.
Hi, I'm Jane Ryder, and I am delighted to invite you to get to meet Eric Greenlee, who is joining us tonight. Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been in the Choral Society, um, the many things that you offer to us, and what you're going to be singing or playing or whatever you're going to do. Right. Um... So I joined the group in the spring of 2016. Um, I had been with Dr. Rohde at Iowa State for four years uh, while I was there. Um, so it's been a really great part of my life for the past uh, almost five complete seasons. Um, I've been lucky enough to serve on the board for two years going on three now. Um, and with that time I've helped with this project a tiny bit. Um, I've done some some uh, work on the society celebration, and uh, it's been a great uh, experience for me to be on the board. Also, um, the three pieces I'm going to be doing are the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, and Edelweiss from The Sound of Music, which mm -hmm. isn't really a Christmas song, but has the word snow in it, and I like it. And then I'm also singing You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. And all three of these were accompanied by my mom, who's a pretty fantastic piano player, and my dog, 14-year-old golden retriever Butters, makes a cameo. Um, so he was excellent too. Eric, it sounds like we're in for a real delight. Um, there's nothing better than being able to sing and make music with your family. Mm -hmm. And so having your mom be able to accompany you is a priceless kind of thing. Merry Christmas. 
Take the seasick crocodile. Sandwich with arsenic so 
that good? Okay, I can talk. How about you? Hey, good evening and welcome back. Um, my name is Aaron Coleman, jumping in here. Just to let you know, that was uh, Eric Greenlee that we just heard a couple minutes ago. And with us right now, Jane and I, Jane Ryder and I are just kind of a little conversation as we kind of wrap up our evening here in the last few minutes of the of our singathon. Uh, but as we do that, one thing I did want to announce is as of right now, we have raised over $14,000 for the Des Moines Choral Society, which all I can say as president of the board, I am pleased beyond measure with how this event has worked for us this evening. And I can't thank everyone for their support enough. In addition to that, I can't thank all the people who have worked behind the scenes here, especially John Duvick, who has been uh, for lack of a better way to describe him, the wizard behind the curtain for us this all day today, just keeping everything running on time and smoothly. So, John, I want to thank you on my behalf and on behalf of the rest of our board and everything else for all the work that you've done. Uh, Jane, what I'd like to talk about now, if we have a couple minutes here, is what we've got coming up here in the next week with the Coral Society. I know you've been working on a big project with a committee here, the Messiah Project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I sure can. Um, one of the things that Jim always says at our Christmas concert is that our concert is our gift to the community. And clearly since we don't have a concert this year, we uh, decided that we needed to do another kind of a gift for our community. And after throwing around a few ideas, we came up with the idea that we wanted to feature music from the Messiah. So from that idea came a small group of people who wrote the script and put this all together. And this will be coming out on um, sa next Saturday at 7.30, which is the time we would have had our concert. And the project is going to include um, information about Handel, about how the Messiah was written, the kind of interesting kind of facts that you might not know, but also talks about text painting, which was one of the wonderful things that Handel did to help his music become clear visually in the audience's mind. And we'll be talking about that in three different pieces that the Choral Society has sung in the past. We will end with the Handel's Messiah, and we encourage everyone to stand and sing with us because I think that is going to be much fun. Um, this is again, our gift to the community. This is not a fundraiser. This is what we want to give back to you who have been so supportive of us over the many, many years that we've been around. Thanks, Aaron? Jane. Yeah, it's it sounds like it's a great project. I know I've not been involved with it nearly at the level that others have. And I, from what I have seen, the committee that has been putting this together has done a fabulous job mm -hmm. on it and has put in a tremendous amount of work. And like you said, this is our gift to the community this year in lieu of being able to have our concert because, well, we all know this has been an unprecedented year for not only the Des Moines Choral Society, but for society in general with everything that has been going on. And this is the best way that we have at this point to give back to our community, give back to our friends, our family, our neighbors, all of those who so have supported the Des Moines Choral Society. But not only that, it's an opportunity for us to really expand our outreach. Um, even today, we've had contributions from people and people have been watching us from not only here in central Iowa, but all over the United States and potentially all over the world. And this has just been a tremendous way for us to really expand where we, the people we can reach out to. It's just been a great experience having watched this and listened to all nine plus hours of this now today. <clears throat> You know, it's amazing that when we started talking about this oh, a month and a half or two months ago as a potential fundraiser, the way this has grown and has just been a tremendous uh, success. 
from everything that we've ever expected. And it's, I, at least from my perspective, this has exceeded even my wildest expectations for this year. But it's something that we need to do to try and um, keep, our, keep the Des Moines Coral Society moving long term to make sure that we can keep the long term viability of our organization. Because many people don't realize this, but we do have um, a few of our a few professional staff members that work with us. And the board did vote to continue to pay all of these members during this time period, even though we're not able to rehearse. And so this is a great way to help fill that gap. Jane? One of the things that we who sing and you who listen to us appreciate is that music is about relationships. And when we sing, we create relationships with you We have already made connections and relationships with our co-singers and actually even with the composer. And as long as we don't have the opportunity to be physically together, uh, this is our gift to be able to continue these relationships that we have nurtured and you have so, so faithfully supported over the years. So again, I thank you. And I know that the Messiah Project is going to be something that you will enjoy. And the next time you listen to the Messiah, you will hear it differently because you will know about some specific things to think about that will make this music even more impressive to you. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly looking forward to being able to watch and listen to it because Again, everything you said, it really is designed to not only allow people to hear the Messiah, but to understand it the way that the composer really was thinking about. There's so much more to all of everything that we do in music than it's just sitting there and listening to it. A lot of people find that, you know, as a as a performer, I find that I connect with the music in different ways, not only as I learn it. But as we get up there, it's a it's a totally different experience going from rehearsals to the actual performance and connecting with it in that different level. And music is one of the things that really allows us to transcend all of what's going on around us. Music is something that has an impact on people in ways that they don't realize. Not only that, but it's also something that when you look at the Des Moines Choral Society. Our members range, there's a wide variety of range for our organization. We have many people that are young and relatively new right out of college who sang in their collegiate choirs. Yet at the same time, we have people who have been singing and performing and enjoying music for decades. And that's just something that an organization like the Des Moines Carl Society that we're able to do that not many other organizations can. It's just a great opportunity for all of us to spend time together, learn music, but not only that, but get to know, get to know our fellow singers and get to know our audience in different ways than what we would at any other point. Jane? We would again like to thank Those of you who have uh, supported us tonight as we have created this Singathon, I think it's a quite unique thing. I've not heard of any other um, music group that has pulled off something like this before, but your support has been overwhelming. And I can't begin to tell you how much we appreciate your continued involvement with the Choral Society. I can't agree more, Jane. And like you said, we can't wait to see, from my perspective, I really can't wait to see people in person yet again. You know, we are looking forward to being able to get back into our concert halls and get back into our rehearsal halls as a group and be able to sing together soon. But um, right now, there's still a lot of uncertainty with everything with that. But our hopes is that we'll be able to get back to it soon. Again, on behalf of the board, on behalf of the Des Moines Choral Society, I want to thank everybody who has joined us for our singathon today and everybody who has listened. 
whether it's one minute, one hour, or all nine plus hours of music today. I hope everyone has enjoyed what you've been able to hear. And again, I want to thank everybody for all of the generous contributions that you've sent to us. It's been a tremendous benefit. It's been a, I don't know the best way, the words can't describe how we, you know, how we feel about everything right now. But again, just want to thank everybody for everything that you guys have always have done for us today.